This is Infection, a survival podcast recorded live on Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, episode 188. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Infection, the Survival Podcast. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm screwing everything up. It's like I'm intoxicated, but I'm not. Welcome to the program. Um, saying it's not the twenty-first. I know. What is, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like all. I'm like all out of whack. I'm welcome to Infection. This is the podcast. I could. I mean, I might as well just start drinking. What? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, Infection is our source for the latest information on survival video games. We'll bring you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name is Nick Craig at Nicholas M. Craig is my Twitter. InfectionPodcast.com is my website. I'm not inebriated, and neither is he. And he's in Boise, Idaho. Brian with an I. Yes. Aldridge. Hey, Brian. Hey, if you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, of course, my blog, BiteOfTech.com. Uh, and then we have our website where there's lots of cool information. If you're looking for any of the patch notes that we discuss, uh, we play some videos during the show. Maybe you're in the audio only format. Uh, you can go jump on our website, infectionpodcast.com. On the right or on the, the center area, you'll see all the episodes that we've we've done. So we are at this will be episode 188. So you can go look at any of the notes from those past episodes. Uh, and also on the right hand side, we have a link to our Discord group. So maybe you're wanting to give some input that might help direct future shows. Uh, you can just jump into our Discord and uh, jump into the news channel and post links in there. So if you just click join our server on Discord, that'll connect you up. It's really easy. It's a free client. Uh, they have a nice mobile app as well if you don't want to install something on your computer. Uh, and they have a web-based version. So you don't even have to install an app if you don't want to, if you just want to jump in there every once in a while. Yes. Uh, then we have links to our YouTube channel or Twitch channel, which, of course, is live right now if you're here on Tuesday and uh in our audio only formats so whatever if we're not on a platform that you're normally used to maybe listening to people on or watching something on make sure you let us know because we try to be on every platform out there so if you're on you have a preference for a platform or maybe an app something uh just send us a message if we're not on there and we'll look into getting listed yes you can do that i want to give a, a special shout out to all of our audio listeners um We've got a lot of people that are, um, I don't know if you uh, you call them the I guess, silent majority, I guess is what you'd say, but people that listen to the show on, on the audio, the, the podcast version, they don't chat, they don't tweet, they don't email, they don't discord, they don't steam, they just listen to the audio show. I, I one, of them, one of them reached out to me this week and I'd never seen the name before. Um, and and that, that's, that's, who, that's who it was. It was a, it was a lurker. Um, so I know there's a whole bunch of you people out there. Thank you for supporting us through the last 187 episodes. Um, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Obviously we've got our vocal yeah. majority, uh, our friend Judd blowing up the chat right now. And I do want to give a quick shout out to our friend Johnny fine who subscribed, um, on Twitch right before we got started, uh, this evening, Johnny, thank you very much. Appreciate it as always. And, uh, Brian, I mean, it, it's, it's happening. We are. Uh, at this point, I think now I think are ten days away from it's a week and a half. Week and a half, yeah. I mean, tomorrow uh, Thursday, I'll be leaving very early next Thursday morning um, to head out to uh, the the great state of Washington and uh, semi great state of Washington. Well, I mean, it's great. I've never been there, so I don't know. The great state of Washington. I almost said the great state of Seattle. That would have been great. Uh, <laughs> I'm heading out to the uh, Republic of Seattle. Yeah, the Republic of Seattle to um, embark on PAX West 2018. Uh, yes. Sat down last night, went through our uh, emails of um, our, our, our barrage of emails that have come in from people hawking their games. We've got a list of people we want to check out. Um, there's some cool panels. There's a lot of there's some cool Brian. There's some cool after parties which we're gonna have to go check yeah. out. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff. So we're doing that here in, um, I think the show starts in 11 days, but we'll be out there a day, a day early. Um, yeah, pretty much the day before to get settled, get checked into our Airbnb and make sure that everyone's there. Yeah, this says nine days. I, so that's Thursday. I, I so we're nine I, days I, from Thursday. Day when, Thursday. When we leave. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're 10 days from the show, nine days until that event. So, uh, 
there you go. Look, we're, uh, we're, we're looking, we're looking forward to it. And if you're going to be out there, if you know somebody that is going to be out there, um, and they want to, you know, grab something to eat, grab a drink, whatever, let us know. We will, uh, we'll be out there almost all day, Thursday, all day, Friday, all day, Saturday, all day, Sunday, which we only spent two days at PAX East last year. We'll be out there yeah. full, almost four full days and then everybody leaves on Monday. So looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, be nice to we'll have more time to get some restaurants this time oh yeah there'll be a lot of restaurants plus we'll be able i think to check out some other things at the show that may be interest to us personally but not to the podcast which is more of a survival zombie you know shoot 'em up kind of audience some per obviously we're on we're much more into board games now than we were last year and there's a whole bunch of board game stuff going on um at, at pax so we'll check all that stuff out nevertheless that's coming up we got one more episode before PAX yes. and uh, we'll be, we'll be wheels up. We'll be flying out. So yes. Yes. All right. And then, yeah, that's what it'll be interesting to see uh, because we, you know, looking at, at the list, there's not a, as many survival games, but, but that's the, the survival games that have put out and are known to people right now. So hopefully uh, one thing I'm going to be looking at is getting on the ground and finding maybe talking to some of the different people and say, have you seen any survival games here? Are there any upcoming survival games? Maybe uh, some interviews of maybe soon to be announced or announced at PAX, yeah. PAX pros, uh, possibly type of survival games. So uh, that'll be kind of our goal is to get some of those new and upcoming things. Uh, and then, I mean, we kind of branch out because, you know, we talk about other games that are, I mean, H1Z1 kind of did this to us since it is halfway survival. It's, it's a BR game now. Yeah. And everything's um, a BR game. Yeah, and so every, it seems like everything has a BR game, so it kind of made us branch out from survival to, you know, that's all under survival now, I guess, even though it's not really survival. Yeah, You're but, trying to survive a match. Well, originally survival was zombies or an environment or an infection or something yeah. like that. Huh, infection. Um, but now when we're looking at trailers and stuff, pretty much anything that involves killing Food something or, or yeah an or inventory managing, management anything where you get the bandage it seems like oh that's a survival game yeah and and you know that's i think obviously because what would we talk about i mean h h1 h1z1 has abandoned us so uh yeah. we gotta find something to talk about so yep all right um so this week we are going to be doing for our game of the week overwatch uh there has been a new character that's been put in there so we, we're gonna get some time in there check it out uh, and it's, that's one of those stable games that we know, uh, there's going to be no visible hackers and it's going to run correctly. Uh, a lot of people have it. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a top tier game that you can play. So we're going to play some overwatch this week. And if you have overwatch, make sure you have it all updated. Um, maybe if you haven't launched battle.net in a little while, open it up the day before, make sure everything downloads so that, uh, so that you're overwatch is ready to go on friday night yes always uh, make sure you're always make sure your games are up to date so that you don't have to deal with any of that nonsense during uh during the time so yes uh, check that out friday night It'll be now. 8 p.m eastern on friday yes and uh, you can join that the way you do that is you head on over to our discord server which brian says on our website infectionpodcast.com click on our discord icon and that's where uh, people chat during it so if you're going to be part jump in the chat and, and interact now yeah, so we, yeah we played we did play a game this past friday how did that go uh we, we played some PUBG, Ooh. and i will have to say that i feel like the the hackers in the game are as bad as ever wow or possibly worse um i just from seeing people's comments regarding the game lately uh it's it's a majority of games that you're seeing hackers now. Uh, one interesting thing that I, I did realize last week is that it's, from what I can tell, there's three different anti-cheats in PUBG right now. Most people realize Battle Eyes on there. Yeah. We talk about a private one, uh, but it also installs easy anti-cheat when you launch it. Yeah, I've seen easy anti-cheats name before. So that's that's something kind of odd that um I, I thought there was only two in there but they're running three anti cheats and they're still just it seems to be blatant aimbot 
Um, I don't see people flying around, but it's, it's got to be, uh, my opinion is that if they don't fix this fairly soon, the game is going to just going to go downhill to where I think the player base will start to abandon it because we've seen this with H1Z1. Uh, they'll only put up with so much. And we kind of called it right before it happened. You know, we, we started saying the cheaters are out of control. If they don't fix it, like the player base is, is going to drop away. The game is going to die. And I think with this, you know, sure they've got their mobile uh, that people play, but that's a different game. That's not the same thing. No, uh, not I even think the same, same company PC, that's making it. No, I, but I think the PC client, I don't think anything that they do unless they can get the amount of hackers solved uh, or, you know, down to the minimal amount to where it's not obvious every other game that somebody is, is shooting you with an aimbot or for me watching the, it, the replays really make it blatant because <laughs> when somebody's sitting there and keeps looking, cause you can see your marker in the replay, right? In the death cam. Uh, so when you can see that they keep looking over at your, your character that they're not supposed to even see. Uh, and, and then they kind of work their way up and come right in the room where you're at and shoot you. That's very frustrating. So uh, I, I just, I think that that, if it, that might hurt them, the fact that they let people view those because it just makes it that much more obvious when somebody's doing something like that and you can see it. Um, you know, it might help maybe get a few less reports because I've had one where I've watched it again and say, okay, that, that looks legit, right? But now when it's not legit, it's usually very obvious. Um, and I don't know if these, you know, how much they're banning anymore. We haven't heard anything from uh, from Battleye about their bans since January. Really? When they made yeah. that. Yeah, they made that one announcement saying we banned this many people and that's the last time they've really talked about it. Um, Looking through our notes, I don't think we have any PUBG news this week that's relevant so i don't want to really dovetail into pop g I, I, I looked at their yeah their fix but list they don't they're not doing a, a weekly update on that yet but um there's been clear i mean there's been some radio uh, the, the, what's the name of this program that they're doing this month or over the next couple months uh the fix the, fix, fix the game yeah fix your yeah, game fix, fix pub g um yep th even with that there's still some radio silence. Yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, our, our friend Ross just popped into the chat. He's been kind of my point man on PUBG. Whenever there's something going on, he sends me a message. And the last thing I'd heard from him is that it was rampant with cheaters. And he was yep. starting not to like playing it because it was rampant with cheaters. Um, I don't know if that is, I, I don't know how much that's changed, but from, all of the experiences from casual players, that still seems to be the case. The game is just rampant with, with hackers. And now you're saying they're running, to your knowledge, at least there's three anti-cheats installed. Doesn't mean they're all running simultaneously, but there are three potential anti-cheats that are being used. Yeah. If the game, when you install PUBG, it installs, well, I don't know what their local one is that they're talking about. Like, there's not an executable. It's built into the game. But there's two uh third party anti cheats that are being installed along with PUBG when you install it. Yeah. Ross is saying so there is a, there is, a, there, is a, there are a few notes that they did have. I don't know if we want to dovetail into PUBG since we're sure talking uh, about it so much. Real quick before we do that, Ross is saying that we see them every day, but it's not as bad as it was. It's pretty much like playing CSGO, which I, I guess there's hackers and see I I mean I don't know. So th there is clearly an issue still. I think the spectrum can agree that there's an issue. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, this is the thing is this has become the standard with these types of games. Uh, an interesting conversation. And I think would be, can these type of games survive this amount of cheating? Because a good I don't know that, that all these games that are coming out right now that are of this style, uh, all of them seem to have the same issue. They can't tackle cheating. It's something that that is rampant across any kind of battle royale game, uh, any type of online game. I mean, you know, we talked about CS:GO. Anything that's like this, people cheating makes a big difference in these games. I think that Fortnite 
either planned it out or got very lucky because just the the whole building mechanic kind of changes uh the ability for cheaters to have as much of an advantage because there's not a cheat you can really do that sits there and makes you build really well like that takes skill that takes ability no matter what cheating won't fix that um you know the best you could probably do is make a macro maybe that would make you jump and build a building right but that's not that's not the worst thing that could possibly happen um i think that a game uh to that's just plain mechanics like like h1z1 or like PUBG of shooting running around and looting um that doesn't have something else to throw that off i think they're all going to be susceptible to this to where i don't think they can i don't think any of them will be able to truly be successful in the long run because i think they're all going to be what as soon as they start getting popular this happens they get weighed down with cheaters and then people get to the point where they're just tired of it and then they go do something else and i think part of it has to do with the number with the skin market uh, i think a lot of of cheating and people trying to get skins brings a lot of of the china market into it um, because they use it as a way of making money right uh so i think that i think the fact that that these games are letting people sell skins causes some of this problem to happen what, what does fortnite do that no they don't, they don't have that this is something where people get skins but you know you're not having people playing with bots i mean you look at pubg mobile there's people playing with bots just landing uh you know or in even in the regular game originally i remember people were were having bots that just landed and, and gathered skins all day um it just creates a weird environment for these type of games that i think once again fortnite's the example like they're they're showing how it's possible to not be overcome by this yeah i mean i think the it's no surprise and i mean there here's the thing real quick there is no solu- there is no uh, what's the word? there's no indefinite solution for making cheaters stop there's no switch you can flip that says oh there's no more cheaters there will always be there will always be people that try to and in some case do exploit the game the question is how do you make it so that cheating well first of all so the first of all there's consequences but second of all it doesn't if you're going to cheat make the cheat so minimal that they don't destroy everybody else's play experience yeah. i guess you're not you're never my whole point is you're never going to stop cheaters to say that somebody has stopped cheaters is ridiculous it's just it's not that's not a thing that you can do and that i think that's what fortnite has done if you look at what fortnite has done their guns aren't that accurate right um true. if anyone's doing instant shots and they probably have a way to, if anyone's doing single shot kills with fortnite uh you know on a regular basis most likely they're cheating like there's plenty of missing uh and then the whole building mechanic throws that off as well like even if you're using aimbot um or not necessarily even aimbot but you're using esp and things like that okay you find the person but there's not an easy way to instantly kill a really good player because they have the whole, all the buildings going on and everything else so i think that they that we'll see games have to get more creative of of coming up with ways to just make it to where cheating isn't as effective as it could be yeah you no, you're absolutely right on that so, um yeah that, that's i mean that's just for that's the frustration we had friday night i we i played we played a number of games and we played for a while uh but it just got to the point and for me i was having crashes Oof. kept kicking out to desktop um the client is just very unstable for me and which is frustrating and so uh, uh but i didn't give up like i kept launching it we got in played a number of games it would kick out like it would crash every couple games. I don't know if it has a memory leak or something that it's doing. Um, yeah, uh, and then it, then it eventually kind of kicks out. Um, Ross is saying, you know, I don't know if you know, but Zoom 49 is like 80% consoles or more. Um, but even before consoles were brought into the mix, like we didn't have these issues. Also, uh, look at um, a game like uh, Rocket League. Rocket League, you don't, you don't, think about cheaters in rocket league no, but it's like a, that much, kind of a mechanic how can they cheat well, it's a much simpler game i mean as i'm saying though it's like the <clears> mechanics <throat> of that like we can play rocket league and we're never thinking oh that guy's cheating because they've come 
they've got mechanics in that game that don't really accommodate cheating. I, I think we're going to see more games like that be the popular games to where it you can play and it's not like, oh, is that guy cheating? Um, yeah, and I just I think that that's that's going to have to happen because I think there will be a boiling point with this uh, after it happens so many times with so many different games. Either people are going to go play different kinds of games. You know, maybe they'll leave this whole, this will be what kills this whole genre. I think it's a possibility. Or or they'll have to come up with something creative to keep it alive. Well, I'm just telling you, uh, we talked about this probably three weeks ago. We talked about how often we've been playing these games. You and I both looked. We had not launched PUBG in a, in, in a two or three month time period. And even when we launched it, I don't believe you had an itch to play PUBG Friday. You played it because it was game of the week. And I'm sure some of the other people that played yeah. it were the same thing. Fortunately, and I, I haven't. Sometimes you play a, a game of the week and it's like, oh, I forgot how fun that game is. And it's like you're, you've got kind of catch yourself wanting to play it throughout the week. I have not had that feeling at yeah. all. I was like, I closed it. I said, I'm, I don't want to play it anymore. I closed it and I haven't thought about it since. Yeah. But so the, exactly, and I think that's a sediment with a lot of people. Now, don't get me wrong; we'll cover it. There are still plenty of people playing PUBG. We're not saying that at all. Yeah. But there is, there does seem to be a, and, and maybe this is just our circle. You know, I don't, I don't want to talk in absolutes as, you know, as our, our little subgroup of people that play in our community is is a limited sample size. But there does seem to be dwindling enthusiasm i guess over yeah over these battle royale games um just be- well, i mean there's so many of them come out and you know it's just you, the mechanics the same for most of them yeah well i want to transition into something that controlled a lot of conversation this week on social media and that was h1z1 and and if you've been following if if uh if you've been if you've listened to the last probably two months worth of shows we've spent um, some time at the beginning of every show with like a larger topic, like the, almost the first half of the show with a larger topic. And I think today H one Z one is is a good, um, is a good one to talk about for a little while. Yeah, uh, we covered two weeks ago the, the Jace Hall um of Twin Galaxies was becoming the project manager. I think was that his title wasn't ironed out. He said there were no contracts signed. There were still NDAs to be signed. But he was essentially going to be leading the charge for H1Z1, which is at H1Z1. Kind of this, gu- yeah, being the guidance, the direction. The like, direction. It sounds like, like direction manager is the best thing I can think of. Yeah. As far as giving people on that team, like, here's what people want. Go this direction. Well, he's because leading, I mean, he's the, leading the, the charge. He's not listened. I mean, he's riding yeah, out but, in front of everybody on his horse, and the whole pack is following behind. And that's essentially what's going yeah. on here. Um, I've, so we covered that, we covered, we covered that a couple weeks ago and here's the, there's a couple things about Jace. I've never met Jace. I've never actually talked to Jace. I would love to have him on the program. We probably should reach out to him. Jace Hall is a showman. Yeah. And he, and he's a damn good one at that. He is, he knows exactly how to get people going. He is, he knows show business he knows it he gets it he works with twin galaxies he puts on the whole h1p1 uh or half puts on the h1p1 tournament with twin galaxies and uh, daybreak this man knows how to make i mean christ he had his own tv show i mean he he knows what he's doing he knows show business he knows how to get reaction he knows how to make things look nice and sexy in video he he gets it so over the past couple of weeks his twitter has been this hotbed of little clips and little snippets and little videos and little screenshots and the H1Z1 community is eating it up. Now there's a couple yeah. reasons that I think they're eating it up. First of all, we have not had any direction in this game for nine months now, a year now. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what time, I, I, time has just flown with this game. I, I couldn't, I, I don't know when things happen. I mean, it's just been such a long process. The game was supposed to be out July of 2015. Um, but we haven't had any direction in a while. So he's now kind of in charge of things over there with H1Z1. We, it looks like it's just the battle Royale style game. I don't think he hasn't mentioned anything about just survive. So I think that he's, so here's one interesting thing about the way he works from what I've seen. Um, he doesn't say no, right. To something. Cause he's a showman. I think, 
I, yeah, I think that if if enough people asked him the question of what about just survive, I think I think he wants to leave the door open, right? If he saw that there was huge amounts of interest in just survive, he would go down. I think he would go down that route, right? Probably. So I, I think I think that that is something to where that's why he says, uh, you know he'll say we'll we'll look into it or there'll be more info later i think that he want that would be an option i just think that there's probably not enough interest in just survive now i think so i think it's going to be left behind but i think with him he's the type of guy that says anything is on the table is is what i gather from him and that is part of it, it's quite funny because i he practices a lot of principles that um my boss is kind of driven into our company and 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 with customer focus and not you know cl not h1z1 in the past has not done things because of essentially artificial limitations they have artificially put up walls blockers and barriers because because uh, there, there's no I, I mean there has not been at least a public reason there's just been art there's been artificial in my opinion there's been artificial barriers and whatever jace is yeah. not like that so what happened over the past week is they uh, there was a series of videos on jace's twitter um that appeared to be narrated by adam clegg um who's one of the only uh, ogs still at <laughs> still at daybreak one of the only names that yeah. we still know um so we had um, we had him release a, a set of three videos in which they were talking about um, PS3. Now, for people that don't actively follow H1Z1 anymore and may maybe I haven't followed it in a year and a half, um, they may think, why would H1Z1 be talking about PlayStation 3? They're not. They're talking about yeah. the, the preseason season three which it, by the way they should have you uh, they should have used another acronym talking about the game being back to ps3 is doesn't look great on the outside it looks great if you're in the community yeah. and you understand these acronyms but not everybody does so the series of videos they released showed the build from play season three which a lot of streamers a lot of uh, tw uh people on twitter influencers in the battle royale online community deem as the gold standard there seems to be this consensus and i wasn't we weren't really into h1z1 at that time so i don't remember exactly what playstation uh, playstation uh, pre-season three uh was but that seems to be the consensus amongst the people that play the game pre-season three was the was the greatest thing ever and Jace has the, the the series of videos have have they've alluded to the fact well they haven't alluded they are going to essentially rebuild the game based around what things were and how things acted and how things operated in the third preseason well, of the pretty game. much pre pre um, re combat update yes pre combat that's, update. that's when people really attribute the downfall of the game. Is the con whether that's it or not? Um, that's what people blame it on, um, and I, I think that it that it could be very well what it is. But a lot of people will say the combat update was what really started making people leave the game. So uh, that, that's what they're wanting to do is pretty much roll back before that update. Okay. So that being said, I think this is good. From what I remember of that time period, the game was popular and it was successful nevertheless. Here is my concern, and I don't want to be the negative guy, but I, but I have to be because I'm working based off the past two years of the game, and negativity is all I know about this game. When we talk about ARK, we're, we're, we don't talk about ARK in a negative light because ARK has done nothing to cast a negative glow around them h1z1 on the other hand has done nothing but destroy their has nothing but build up destroy and build up and destroy and do the same thing over and over and over again that so i don't want to be super critical because we don't have all the information but i have a feeling and i have a fear right now 
that this is being overhyped by Jace, and I'm not blaming Jace, but Jace is a showman. He knows PR. He knows how to get reactions. I mean, you look at the replies in, on his tweets. You look at the comments on Reddit. People are eating it up. I mean, he is yep. spoon-feeding them the remake of preseason three. He is spoon-feeding it to them, and they are loving every second of it. When you set the bar, we've seen this happen before, when you set the bar so freaking high on how great everything is going to be, and it isn't to the T exactly how people envisioned it and exactly how people imagined it in their minds, you have failed. It doesn't matter if you yeah. did it 95 or 98% of the way. If you don't hit every last point, if you don't cross every T, dot every I, it's a failure. Because you yeah. set the bar so high. And I've got a concern that that may be happening with this preseason three hype that he's generating. I don't blame him for generating. The, the community needs to be jump-started. Nobody cares about this game. Nobody's playing the game. There needs to be some enthusiasm. There needs to be some energy. So, and, he, and he is very, very smart with how he's releasing these videos. He's releasing them in sections. He released a new one today just before the show. You probably haven't seen it, Brian. Um, where he's sitting down with an engineer. They're looking at a spectator mode. They talk about anti-cheat uh, and how they're working on anti-cheat systems that are, that are, that are you know, next-level things. And it just they're, they're talking about this stuff. And he does it in a very candid way. I just have a fear that this is getting overhyped. I... I hope that I'm wrong. I so, hope that I get proved wrong. But Brian, I mean, you can only set yourself so up for failure. I think here's a here is a kind of a, a parallel. Everybody talks about in WoW, they want to have the Lich King days back, right? They want. <laughs> I don't even want, know what the want, hell you're talking about. <laughs> so they want to go to the kind of mid 2000s. WoW that everybody talked about how that was the best wow. And so everybody's wanting to have those original servers and they want to roll back and have a client that's those that's that client that has the, the everything from those days, right? And I I think and it's just like us when we go play if we go back and play H1Z1 even if we go back to the exact same moments when we had our most fun, it will not be as much fun because it's not the same. It, it was the people that did it, right? If if you could create that same amount uh, of people and and the attitude of the time, uh, you can take. I could go back and and have the exact same client for a while right now. You know what? I go back there and say this wasn't as good as I would remember. I have a really good feeling that that is what would happen. Oh I think wow, this exactly sucks. What's going to happen? Look at this. all these bugs. Look at all these issues. The, look the at all graphics, these things. Like, the graphics are down, been downgraded. Like I, I would look at it and start noticing all those things that I, I look past, then. And I think here is just the same with this. If they roll back, there will be things that people see that are in the new version that they're like, oh, you know what? It, this wasn't as good. Like the the thing that they fixed here that was better. Uh, it's easy to look back and have a memory of something and think that it was great because your mind makes polishes it. it for you. Yeah. It makes it it makes it seem better than it really was. People that have listened to the show in the past know that I've used this example a hundred times, and I'm I'm glad our friend Ross brought this back up. He says, um, "Yeah, I want MW2 back," referring to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I mean, yeah. that is. When people talk about the golden era of Call of Duty, for a lot of people, it's Modern Warfare 2. You go put yourself back in 2008, 2009, whenever that game came out, it sucked. Yeah, It sucked. The game was glitchy. It was buggy. It, it, it was just terrible. There was javelin glitches. People were hacking. People were shoot, shooting AC-130s out of their bodies. The game was broken as hell. There was care package. Yeah. I mean, the game was a disaster, but it's still my favorite Call of Duty because the, yeah. my mind has, you know, it, I was playing with all my buddies. I was in high school. It was great. It was fantastic. Yeah, it, was, it, it was that moment that created it. Uh, and the thing is, is when you go and, and you try to recreate that, it's never going to be the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you, once in a while, you'll come across something like I, I went and played uh, EverQuest like years ago. I went and played EverQuest again. And you want to know what, like, 
I went in there and I was like, everything is so blocky <laughs> and fuzzy. I can hardly tell what some things are. Like my imagination doesn't make that look real for me anymore. We're back then in the late nineties, early to that, like 2000, you, you know, you were used to fuzzy graphics. Oh, yeah. And so your mind filled well, in you the blanks. Were. Yeah. Yeah. And so my, your mind filled in the blanks. I went back and played that now. And it's like, everything's just big blocks. Like my mind, I expect more now. But in my mind, before I went and jumped in there, oh, I remembered EverQuest having much better graphics than that, right? Uh, it, it, everything is like that. And so it, it's great to, like, I like remasters. Uh, if they could come up with a, a remastered. Um, well, they did that with, know, um, they just remastered Call of Duty 4. Yeah, uh, they they just I think it was COD Four that they did if a you remaster. You can give people that same feeling, but with the new updated look, I think people you, appreciate that much more. But see, that's the problem. This is what happened. This is what happened. I I feel like the same thing happened when they did the Z One remaster. I mean, yeah. I think I think that is what what the thing was with with Z One remaster. Um, I I like that map. Because it was the map that we knew for Just Survive. But I'm of the opinion that, that actually, Z, was it called Z2? Did they have another name? I think it was just Z2. Um, I yeah. am of the opinion that Z2 is a better King of the Kill map. Z1 was a better Just Survive map. That's and the just, thing is, that's just my opinion. Z1, but. The, the remastered is not in Z1. So it's like, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like the, the thing that they should have used it for, because that's the thing is we enjoyed running around those towns. And it, the way that the play style worked out, that was enjoyable. Um, and I think when they, when they go and redo the map, like it just kind of broke up that flow and it made it not as natural of a match map for just survive. Um, I think, I think that they get so caught up on here's what people want. Now people want that original feeling they had when they played the game, when it first came out, that's what they want. Uh, you know, they're not going to be able to deliver that. They're going to have to make something new and just try to make it as good as they can. So, we'll, but we'll see. I mean, they can roll it out and maybe it'll be something amazing. But from previous experience of seeing this happen over and over again with gaming communities, thinking that the old version of it was the best. And then when it's, when the, they remake, you know, they put something out that's just like the old one, usually there's no ongoing hype. There's hype for a week, then people stop playing it. And and my concern is that even if they hit preseason three on the head with a hammer, people remember it being better than it was because that's just the way people are. And 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 I don't think that um, the hype that uh, uh, that that Jace is doing is is helping. I mean, we saw the hype with No Man's Sky, and that was with very little information. The internet blew that out of proportion. When you're constantly leaving these little breadcrumbs on Twitter, uh, you, uh, I don't want to say he's setting himself up for failure because that seems that seems ridiculous. But he's setting up the product Brian. That would be for, like me failure. saying here we are going to interview every single game that is at PAX West. Yeah. You know, I mean, but, could, we, but we know we but, can't. But but hold we on could. a second, we could. That's bullshit. We could, Brian. We absolutely could interview every single game. I think we could. I really do. We're going to be there. If for, we gave each game five minutes, we and gonna, we did nonstop. We are going to be there for three. We're going to do. Well, we'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll be there. We'll be doing three days of the show. I guarantee you, we could come pretty damn close to interviewing every single game. First of all, it would be a terrible. We would have a terrible time. We'd be be. We'd be. We, it would. We'd be exhausted. And yeah. you're right. We wouldn't do it. We wouldn't be able. But, but to if do we it. come out and say, you know, uh, but but the thing is, is we've we realize our limitations, and we realize to deliver the best of what we are going to do. Here's what here's how we'll do it. Um, and so that my concern is, since Jace really doesn't have any experience doing this, and he doesn't, he may not even know what the realistic expectations are, or of of delivery for uh, programming and things like that. But you know, that may be a good thing. The more and more I've thought about this, when you've got somebody in charge, I'm going to try to articulate this. I may need your help, Brian. When you've got somebody in charge that knows 
how the system should be done, how the system wor- let's say how the system works, right? Yeah. How the system traditionally works. When they're in charge, all of their thinking is based around we need to stay within these parameters. W- parameters. Why do we stay in these parameters? Because that's how we've done it in the past. In in some respects, not all respects. I mean, there are of course there are literal limitations. I mean, we're talking about a computer program. There are literal limitations. There's an engine. There are actual limit. There are physical limitations here. But when you've got yeah. somebody in charge that knows the system, you stick within your parameters. You stick within your guidelines. You're you're. I think you're less. You stray less off the beaten path because oh, that's going to be, you know that that might revolve that might you know that may require a, a rewrite of this that may require a, re- a redo of this that may require this or that if you don't know the parameters if you don't know the framework and you're just kind of this loose can of cop like jace is just shooting from the hip. hey we're going to do this that and this can the end result still be accomplished probably but guess what it's going to take a hell of a lot more work which is fine i mean it's work do it and at the end of the day you might get a better product because the person leading the charge is not locked in the this is how we develop h1z1 framework this very narrow thing i'm a horse with blinders all i know is these this framework that i've always worked in because of this is how sony online did it and this is how daybreak does it and this is how our engine does it when you've got this guy that goes in here and says i don't care how the hell you did it we're gonna remake this game to be preseason number three i don't care what you have to do get it done that may be what and that he, may be I what they need to do. He's going to be willing to say, well, how close can we get it? Like, what can we do to get as close to this as what I'm wanting? Um, to where before they would have said, all right, here's what, yeah, as you said, here's what we're going to do because, you know, we know we can, we can hit this mark. <laughs> we can, we can hit this bar. And, and I feel like H1Z1 at daybreak has always set the bar low to something they know they can hit. Well, or we've seen some other games put out, better than what we expected on some things because they set the the bar so high that whatever they do even if it's short of what maybe they were internally expecting they put out something that once it gets tossed it's like oh that's really cool i'm gonna say are they setting the bar low or are they setting the bar as i was just saying based on these predefined tracks i feel like they always feel like know that even, they follow i feel like they haven't even hit the predefines though i feel yeah, like i feel like they've come short on what the bar should be like with the average bar or do you want to play any of these videos that he put on here um i don't know uh i'm trying to think of which one was probably the best to show the first one's pretty good the first one kind of explains it a little bit um the first one exp- let me see if i can get this queued up here here we go. Drew is one of our programmers. And he was able to launch on his machine only locally PS3. When they say PS3, they mean the place uh, preseason so number three, not was. PlayStation 3. So go to. Yeah. Where do you want me to go to? Go to Solo. Alright, I'm going to go straight to Solo. Go to Solos. Oh, there you go. There you go. So this is what it was at the time of PS3. Now, there are all kinds of issues with this because it doesn't have, this is just hit running it on his local machine and he created all kinds of special things and special cases to make it run on his machine. But basically, this isn't connected to- And they're gonna have got a bounty system. This isn't connected to any real servers. The this old crafting UI. Look at the old crafting UI. It, it doesn't even have the fancy- It doesn't even have the fancy quick, thing. Crafting. There's, yeah, there's nothing. So this is basically, a revert with bugs and all no nothing <gasps> so that's um that's kind of the stuff that jace has been posting on twitter which is just this and, and that was a three-part series so they released the first one they did them every couple days it yeah. like the first one came out on august 15th the second part came out on the 16th, and then the third part came out on the 20th. So that's how they did their, um, that's how they were doing their, their playtest system. Um, so 
overall, um, I, I feel like I hope they can get to, to that place. Uh, I keep saying play stage. I hope they get to that preseason three thing. I just have a fear that it's being overhyped. And that's, I, I mean, I've done a lot of the talk. I've done a lot of my feeling about this, Brian. Am I crazy? Am I over analyzing? Am, am I wrong? So I mean, I just, I don't know. When I, look, when I look at that first video where they're like, oh, look, we launched this client. For me, I don't understand personally why that was such a big accomplishment because well, they the said why because there's no launch pad, there's no server it's connected to. It is literally running encapsulated on a single computer. There's no, there yeah, is but no, he's got to have some sort of a server there running, is not. even if it's local. He mentioned that he, I think the what's it connecting to to I, handle I all the the server connection? I, it's not. That's what they said in one of the videos. They mentioned this is not connected to any server. But, he's just he's done a whole bunch of he's tweaked a whole bunch of things to make it look like it's a server, but it's not, or, or I don't know what they said, but it's, it's not, there's no launch pad, which is what the third season had. There's no server per se. The, the physics are kind of wacky. Um, yeah. Now there are a whole bunch of bugs. See, that's the problem is this, this third play season preseason was rampant with bugs. I mean, they even yeah. mentioned in this thing that it is full of bugs. So it's kind of like they're starting over. They're just rolling back and it, that should be easy though. That's the thing. I but don't they're not rolling it. back and they've made it clear that they can't roll back due to all of the changes, which with launch pad and everything That's else. What I'm saying. So they would be losing all those. So it's just a weird, they're remaking. Maybe, maybe they're going to have them side by side where they can kind of mimic settings. Like, okay, here's how we were doing our bullet drop. You know, maybe they just have wanted to have a version that's sitting there that has, all the settings and the way they were doing it then so they can reference it and try to mimic the settings as closely as po as possible that seems the only thing that would make sense to me because i don't know why you'd waste your time um rolling back or wasting the time that was put into it to fix all those things yeah unless you take that person and say all right well we know what fixes we did to fix a lot of these issues and then re-implement the fixes that seems like it'd almost be easier they're essentially rebuilding the old version with the up-to-date client that's what that's what they're doing, and that's how they're yeah, going to do so it. Many changes, the, yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing, the, and that's their big process. And, and they keep saying that nothing is impossible. That's that. That's their. Um, that's their slogan. That's their. It just motto. takes time and money, and and are is their investment company willing to put that much out? If they if they view that there's not enough hype, that's the thing. Is he's got to get this hype built up, and he's got to get to where there's a certain amount of obvious. Oh, look, all these people are going to be so excited. They're going to get all these skins. Like money's going to come into the company again, right? It, if they don't see, if he doesn't hit the bar on hype, that investment company is going to say, all right, you know, scrap it, just like they did with Just Survive. So I think for him, that's why he's pushing this so hard because he has to hit that mark to where when he, when the investment company kind of reevaluates this, they say, yeah, okay, there's a lot of people interested in this. Let's, commit the time and resources to do this yeah because it right now there's still probably minimal staff i mean most people are gone it's not like they've rehired a big team of people yet um if they're really going to put this time into it so, i mean this is kind of a, a small group of guys right now playing with it and doing stuff this is true i just I thought that was an interesting conversation. I don't. I, I hope that they're not setting them, their, their, themselves up for failure with this. Jace is a Jace we'll is know a, in six months. <laughs> yeah, Jace is a, a Jace is a showman. Jace is an entertainer. Jace gets the PR, the 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 image. Jace gets it. The question yeah. is, can they can they deliver? Can they deliver? And when you said, I'm just I, I'm just again I'm shooting I'm just I'm just shooting from the hip here. When you set the bar so high. It makes it so much harder to deliver, especially with a garbage engine. With their still, which they're still limit, uh, which is still I think their biggest hurdle. Um, I don't know what the hell they have for staff. I mean, there are limitations still that they've got to deal with. So um, that's uh, that. That's the past week on H1Z1. It's been a while since we've had a kind of a more in depth conversation about H1Z1. Um, yeah. I just, I, I mean, I hope it succeeds because I mean, I really did. I mean, as much, I much would much prefer to have just survive be worked on but i remember playing 
on a semi-regular basis, H1Z1 around that time period. I mean, I I, there, yeah. I remember hopping in, in Discord channels and playing uh, H1Z1. Because at that point, it, I don't, I, it, it must have been fun. I was playing it. I mean, there was a yeah. point when we were playing uh, I think it was, King of the it was around the time of the combat update that we lost full injury. And I don't know that it was necessarily the combat end, uh, update. Uh, or if it was the hackers or what what it was, but there, it was around that time that we just said, "All right, we're done." Now, Jade, I think we're having, I'm starting to have like bad experiences every time we log in. Yes, and our friend uh, Jade Alori says, saying in the chat, they don't need a showman; they need a game. They need game makers. I disagree. They need they need somebody to lead the charge, and in a lot of, I mean, look at um, uh, look at uh. Um, oh man, I'm totally drawing a blank on this one. Um, Steve Jobs. I'd help you, but I'm trying. No, Steve, okay, Steve Jobs. <laughs> I mean, Steve Jobs. As as much as he was, he was a showman, and he he if if you told Steve Jobs when he was running Apple the second time before he died that something couldn't be done, he didn't accept limitations. He, he fired That's, you. You were fired. You were unemployed. He did not yeah. want you to hear. He did not want to hear, no, we can't do this. That, that can't be done. No. That and, was not in his vocabulary. No, and the reason that this is, this iPhone, the reason that, that the every, almost, not everybody is walking around with a self, a smartphone in their pocket today is because s s people told Steve Jobs no, and he said, either do it or get lost. And, yeah. it, and, and I don't know if that makes him a showman, but... They've got. They, I believe they've got the people that can actually make the game. I mean, they've got programmers that have been in this industry for tw twenty years with EverQuest. I mean, these people know how to program, but they don't know. But there was ne there's never been somebody to lead the charge. Chris Wynn was on it for a little while. He uh, got an, uh, I guess, a lucrative offer from Riot Games and, and worked over there. Uh, Smedley was the Just Survive lead, but once those games split in half and he was fired. There really, I don't think there has been this ma this massive control. There has not been this driving force like Jace. So I, having the game makers, of course, is important. But having the showman leading the charge, saying this is what we're gonna do, figure it out, is almost as it, almost if not more important than the developers themselves. The de yeah. I, I, this is gonna sound really mean. The de you can find developers. You can't always find a showman. And a person who's who puts out an idea and says, This is get this done. That's what I'm saying. That, I, mean, I mean that's you, much harder to replace. Steve Jobs, he came up with ideas and then he just pushed people to make that, you know, yeah. make it happen. Um, and I think that we've had with H one Z one no one having that formed idea of here's what the game is supposed to be. Because we've seen the game go a million different directions in the past couple of years. Three, three and a half years or something, how long we've been doing yeah. the show, yeah. It's gone everywhere on us. So, I mean, that's the thing is I think that if anything, having one person saying, here is what we want to make, and one person having, because that's that's what Smedley did. Smedley had an idea, and he pushed them to make that idea. And I think ever since he left, no one has actually had any clue of what the game was supposed to be. They just seemed like they were going week to week. Yeah. And it, we've been proven wrong. I feel like we've said things like this very similar in the past because we believed it. I believe it again. I'm looking forward to it. I I want H1Z1 to to be successful. There's no reason for it not to be successful. I'm of I'm of the honest opinion, and I don't have any information to back this up. That if they get Just Survive, excuse me, if they get King of the Kill H1Z1 to a decent level, there is a possibility for Just Survive. I really do think if they can get King of the Kill back to its glory days and people are eating it up, I do think there is something for Just Survive. I really do. Because at this point, yeah. they would have closed. There's Somebody is keeping it on the back burner for a reason. And I hope it's yeah. because eventually they plan on turning that into you know, something, something else. Yeah. Um, I did want to play he, that last video that he posted, or the, the last one where it says currently... Because um, I thought this is interesting. He logs in and he does stuff. Uh, one is there thing is... Is there any talking? Yeah, there is. Okay. You'll appreciate this. All right. Hold on one second here, Brian. Twitter videos are a this, little weird to play. This will sound very familiar to you. Hold on. I, I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All yep. right. Here is... Uh, I can't find my screen capture. 
All right, here's Jace Hall. Is that is him? Is he narrating it? Um, no, it's just it's a video that oh. he posted. Okay, here we go. Don't cheat. No cheating. You cheater, cheater. You cheater. You no good. You no good. You cheat. No hacking. You no. You no hack. You no. You 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 no hack. You no hack. You don't cheat. You cheater. You. There is no cheating. You no cheat. <laughs> No cheating you. Yeah, this is us. <laughs> I don't know. This you might know be him, right? Is this him? It says Jace Hall on the left. No more okay. cheating for you. No more cheating for you. You get no cheating you. So this is, he posts things like this, which is kind of funny because this reminds me of the old days of H1Z1. I mean, if they're wanting season three back, there you go. Yeah. And uh, but he's, so, he res yeah, he responds to people's tweets with more info soon. He keeps uh, he's he, he he gets it. I hope he can do it. I just I have a I I think it's possible that he's overhyping it. But nevertheless, I think if there was a guy to do it, somebody that doesn't know the limitations, somebody that can say I don't want to take no as an answer, freaking yeah. make it work. That may be, and I, I I don't know if he's like that. I mean, he may not be, but it, I I have a feeling he's not interested in taking no for an answer so one thing i did find interesting i saw somebody actually get banned uh because they were mess they were playing with him like not messing with him they were actually in a, he joins late night games and plays around with people uh -huh. in the games uh and so he was spawning in this whole other vehicle that's not even in the game anywhere um it was like a modern vehicle or you know some crazy looking vehicle and then and then some, and then these players were getting into it and driving around, and, and H1Z1 actually banned them for using the games that he was the uh, vehicles that he was spawning in. Really? Did they? Un I you assume know, like they banned them. It was like some auto ban. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, he goes in there, and messes around, and it ended up on some streamer got banned for it. That's actually pretty funny. Um, so. That that's actually very funny. So I, I mean I don't know. There's no way to know. It's just all it's all speculation at this point, but. I, I, we need we need to try to get Jason. I wonder. J I bet you Jason will come on this show. I wonder if he's going to be at PAX West. Yeah. I don't know. That's a great. I I'll tweet yeah, him right we, now and ask. We, we should tweet him and see. us say, hey, will you be there? So maybe we could get a face to face interview. Yeah, I'll tweet him right Just now. Tell him we are the original H one Z one podcast. Uh, I mean, he knows. He, uh, you know, <laughs> Clegg will be Clegg will tell him who we are. <laughs> Clegg will be like, do not talk. Do to these not guys. talk to these guys. It's just a coincidence that after they talked to us, the game ceased Fell to down. exist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So. All right. Um, so one thing I did want to mention here that that was posted this week by Twitch. Mm, um, yes. They're actually changing Twitch Prime. Now, this isn't survival news, but it does affect us because we do uh, we do get support by Twitch Prime, uh, and we do stream on Twitch. So, uh, but what they're doing is they're actually changing. Right now, if you're a Prime member, you don't get ads in Twitch. Right. Uh, so they are actually changing that to where any new Twitch Prime accounts are after September 14th will start having ads again. So if any you will, subscription. If, yeah. So Twitch Prime members with monthly subscriptions will continue to get ad free viewing until yes. October 15th. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you have one right now, and if you already have an annual subscription, or if you upgraded the annual subscription before September 14th, you continue to get that until your next renewal date. So they're going to be bringing ads back, which makes sense to uh, to Twitch Prime because obviously they they are giving people money for things and whatever. I mean, I don't know, like what kind of money they're really giving to people other than because it's most of right now these, I guess it's a lot of those Twitch Prime subscriptions. They're giving out money. To us. Twitch Prime yeah. to a lot of streamers uh, when they're not having the income really come in. It's it's kind of based on something that they already had the money for, anyways. People aren't buying Twitch Prime or getting Prime to get. specifically for Twitch. 
But speaking of that, uh, our friend uh, Deacon just subscribed with, uh, he says, his, his lucky number seven. So uh, yes. thank you very much for that, Deacon. Appreciate it as always. And uh, yeah, coming in with uh, lucky month number seven. So thanks, Deacon. Appreciate it. Yep. Um, and then also they were going to, there was another thing. Um, there was two things. I'm trying to remember what the second one was. I, I don't see the second one, but yeah, there, there was actually two things that were changing and I don't see what the other one is, but yeah, the ads was the main thing that they're going to be doing to where you will start getting ads. And they said, if you don't want ads, you can do look into like Twitch turbo and things like that as well. Um, and that'll still give you that ad free experience. Yes. But it's a, it's a separate subscription that you can do. Yeah. Well, so there you go. Some small changes coming to Twitch. Uh, yes. And so uh, and that won't affect, affect most people. Uh, you know, I, I think that most people have ad blockers in the first place. Yeah, I would say that's probably the case. <laughs> I would say that's uh, probably a pretty so, accurate statement. And so not that I'm suggesting that people do that, but I think that, you know, for a lot of people that, if they're really frustrated about it, they probably already have done that. Um, and this is more for those people that, I mean, they're about, so I'm okay. What, what percentage of people do you think actually use that ad block for us? There's the techie people, right? They do generally. Um, but do you think that, well, I'd say think of all the non-technical people out there. Yeah. But how many non-technical people are watching, uh, people play Fortnite on Twitch? Probably a lot, probably a lot of 14 year olds. Oh, yeah, they're running ad block. I mean, they're not stupid. Think so? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what the number is. I'm not going to just make one up, but it's got to be a high majority of people. Yeah. Hmm. I just, I'm just wondering because obviously YouTube, there's a lot of people not not using ad block. Well, if you use ad on you, if you use ad block on YouTube, you use it on Twitch. I mean, you install ad block. Yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying, but there's a lot of people still watching ads on YouTube. True, but that's most mobile. So I'm just, yeah. Well, and I think, block. yeah, and I, I've, I've told, will be told people before, that's one of the main reasons why Android exists is because they wanted to make it as difficult for people to not see ads. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, so they, they want to make sure everybody sees ad, ad, as many ads as possible and them having their own environment. The thing is, that once you get into the PC world, they lose that control. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, do you have a preference of where we go after this? No, um, we're about an hour through. Um, so I don't know if you want to start your giveaway. But... Yeah, let me, uh, I got to get back logged into it. So just give me a few minutes. I don't know if you want to talk. About yeah, that. let's, um, let's see. Ah, let's uh, real, uh, real quick. Um, uh, fallout, f uh, excuse me, fall uh, battlefield fives open beta begins September 6th. We've talked about, uh, this battlefield thing coming out in the past. So, uh, their open beta starts September 6th. It's available for um, anyone who pre-orders, and it will be it, you can preload it on the third of September through Origin or wherever you're buying it. But then it will be available to play on September third. So, uh, quick note that that is available with that, and um, yeah, that's uh, with that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else quickly I can jump into before. Um, one thing there is there the humble bundle this month. There's a humble bundle that's released that's uh, it's horror games. One interesting one on there is Friday the Thirteenth is actually on there, which I thought was kind Oof. of strange. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Because they know that no new content is coming. Um, I just thought it was kind of strange that they put Friday the Thirteenth as is as a game on humble bundle but um they do have one that has white noise two layers of fear how to survive which we played um how to survive two uh detention bioshock remastered uh yom yomawari night alone and then has f13 and dead by daylight so those are the current those are the games in that new humble bundle and there you go just released yeah, the humble right. spooky horror bundle, thirteen days to uh, to get that. We think that the that there should be a limit on. Like, do you think it's dishonest to put F thirteen yes. to sell F thirteen still now? Absolutely, absolutely. I just I I, I was just kind of surprised because if you go and look at the news, like you know that there's no content coming and it's probably not going to 
be up forever. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, I'm not going to make a guess exactly when it's going to go away, but I was, I mean, I am going to say that it's not going to be that far from now. Oh, I mean, of course they're, they're not allowed to make any content. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, post this. This will be a 60 points raffle and you put exclamation point giveaway in chat. Uh, we'll run this till the end of the show. Um, and we're giving away a copy of Staxel. And this is a early access sandboxed simulation agriculture game. It looks kind of like Minecraft, <laughs> but interesting. Uh, I guess a few more pixels on it. Uh, it's got mostly positive ratings. Came out in January of this year. Uh, it's 20 bucks currently. So you, uh, if you want to enter that, play around with it. Looks like it could be an interesting. It looks like it's a, a more detailed version of Minecraft. That's what it looks like. And if you're not tuning in live, you should. We're live here most Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash infection podcast. All right, we got to throw the ship in overdrive here, Brian. Um, yeah. We got a lot of stuff to get into and not a whole lot of time. So where uh, where do you want to begin? Let's jump to seven days to die really quick. Oh. There's not... Is it, we got an update? A lot of, um, there's information. Ah, okay. Uh, one thing I did want to show first is they had, uh, did I do the same? I did the same one. Uh, I'll get you another link here because I did the same one twice. But uh, the one that's on there, you can actually show. He says, keep your eyes open for a new video sometime this week. Now that's his one that he's kind of does a blog video. But what I'm hoping is that he actually mentions maybe how close they are to release. Uh, how much progress they maybe have till Alpha 17 is actually coming out. Uh, but he does show some images just to show the uh, new shader. If you look, I mean, it does look different than before. Oh, for sure. It, just, it looks different. So uh, I'm not sure if, it, if, I mean, this I probably is in a local client. Um, so I think that this is pretty accurate to what it's going to look like, look like for us. So, all right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to redo this link here because I posted the same one twice. Look at that one. Uh, that would just show some more screenshots of, uh, that just shows some more screenshots of what the new shader looks like. Cause I want people to be able to see that. All right. So yeah, hopefully I would assume that in a week we'll have a little more information, but I mean, it still might be a month or more before it's released. What a shame. So there you go. So that's with the, uh, with the new shader, everything just looks, I don't know if it's clear or just, I guess you think it looks clear. I don't know. It's been so, so long since I've played. It's been so long since I've played it. I really don't know. It just looks different. I know it looks different. <laughs> and so without having a side by side screenshot, the characters look different, like the zombies do. Yeah, they definitely. Seems look like different. they have a much more detail uh, and shape to them. So I'm ready to play it. You know, whenever they finally put an update out for yeah, this, maybe 2019, maybe 2020 yeah. if we're lucky. Well, PH may be the winner on that. <laughs> I guess so. Yes. All right. Um, we did get a request to talk a little bit about Escape from Tarkov. We haven't talked about them in a while. Yes. So there. First of all, there's the point nine video, which is the current. It, it's the current one, and I don't recall that we showed uh, the point nine video. Uh, but if you want to show people currently what it looks like, can we uh, talk over it, or do we need to? Sh yeah, we, we can. It's okay. most. It's like shooting sounds and everything okay, else. Perfect. So this is the current state of the point nine video. Now they did show. Uh, a video for the point one, which uh, I saw, I saw a thing kind of showing off some of the features and there were some pretty interesting, uh, animations and things like that in there. Actually in this one, you can see, well, I, I don't actually, I don't think it's this video. Uh, but yeah, yeah, here, watch this. <laughs> okay. So did you see cool. that? The gun. Can you re rewind that gun, really quick? The gun twirl. <laughs> yeah. Where he's, where he twirls the gun. Yeah. I think the gun itself looks good, but we'll watch his face. It's the, the, like there's no animation. It's purely hand animation. It looks kind of funny, but um, 
yeah this game is it's kind of story driven so uh that's something that's different that we're not seeing in other games usually like this there's actually a story that you're you're playing in this game yeah, there's never a story uh, that you're following yeah and uh and this is more of an mmo type of a game there's gear and the items that you collect are a big part of the game uh one thing that this has is is trading and uh and so if you look at some of the, what they've been doing for updates they've been talking about um mainly changes for trading like they're trying to balance that out a lot uh and then they're working right now on the point one patch the point ten patch uh so they're trying to get there to where the net code is better uh, there's been a lot of complaints about about the net code in this game um so they are working on on fixing the sync and getting the frame rates to be better reworking the inventory this this game has a unique inventory of its shapes so you have to fit everything into like you know you can turn them and things like that but it, it, you're kind of sh filling like tetris your inventory slots uh and then they're mainly getting a lot of fixes but if you look uh there's I, I just put a link in here to their reddit where they're showing some of the differences they're doing in trading uh and this kind of explains so they have traders in the game that you can you can go in and pick you can loot items in the world and then trade them for other items um and so they have a kind of a unique trading system so these are different traders that you can talk to and or that you can open up and and then you you have to discover things that they have in the inventory and then you can take items that you've collected and trade them for better items so it's kind of a unique one i haven't seen any other games really do this uh, and and you'll progress over time to get more and more items so this game currently is in a kind of closed alpha if you pre-purchase you can get into the alpha uh it's not on steam yet because they they said that they're going to go on steam when it's done so they're not doing the alpha in steam which i like yeah i think that's pretty respectable. Uh, and so once it's finished then they'll they'll release it in onto steam as, as the, the actual release of the game so uh, I've heard kind of mixed reviews on it. Some people say that, you know, it's a mess. Some people say they really enjoy it. Some people say it's a harder version of PUBG. Uh, but I, I think it's more of an MMO style. It's It's got kind of the feel of PUBG as far as going around and shooting like that uh, with some MMO mixed in, which, I mean, maybe that's kind of what Just Survive was trying to go for. I mean, if you look, that's, but they were kind of promising. So, uh, PH and, says you can't buy it on Steam, but do they send you a Steam key? Um, I think right now it's probably a, a private client. I haven't seen people, I haven't seen the client, but I, don't, I haven't seen anybody running it on Steam. So, I'm thinking they probably have like a private launcher or some way that they're doing it right now. And, uh, and the reason we're talking about this is because somebody commented on YouTube. So um, yes. one of our subscribers on YouTube, Mr. Mr. Veep, or um, commented and said, any chance of covering some escape from Tarkov on next podcast? Well, yes. The answer is yes, we can. So if you, you know, if you have something you want us to cover, tweet us, send us a YouTube video, uh, or excuse me, send us a, a YouTube comment, whatever, get in touch with us. We're, there's plenty of these games out there that are always, always being worked on, and we don't really cover them until somebody asks because there's, I mean there there's just so many different games that, that you know we just we can't get into all of it so yeah and so uh i don't know of the actual release date yet i haven't seen anywhere where they've actually said here is a solid release date i think they're just working on it and uh you know probably when they get close to having most of the features that they're wanting they'll announce a release date on it but um yeah, I mean, they do have a, a roadmap of here's what we are delivering in 2018, uh, but I'm just not sure what they're planning on 2019. But I would assume that it's probably going to be more publicly available in 2019. Yes, probably that's so. that's probably what it seems like. Is there, uh, I want to thank thank my friend Dave for coming in with the uh, the cheer. We appreciate you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you. Th th thanks for coming in with the cheer. We appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, so actually, one game that we just we got a little bit of heads up. Um, because our friend Jens mentioned it at the end of the interview we did with him. 
but their studio is releasing and then they actually set a release date and there's a video here for this for mutant year zero yeah so i don't know if you want to play this video hopefully it won't get us banned from twitch oh is this a video that's uh, allowed to be played i yeah it's allowed to be played oh, but there's just a game, yeah. yeah you know it's just, just, I don't know. I've seen this trailer. I, I don't... Something interesting. Yeah, okay. In there. I, I feel like I, I've seen this trailer. I don't, I don't remember what, what's going to get us in trouble here. Well, is it's just, the, there's something that's it's probably pig, gross. I mean, there's a pig thing. Yeah, the pig thing. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's oh, Brian's backyard. <laughs> all right um and i so this is going to be december 4th and unfortunately they're not going to be at pax which they're at freaking yeah. gamescom in euroland not not at you know well, it is close to where they are it is it is so uh that uh that that makes a little bit that's a little bit different but they're not going to be at PAX West, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that'll be out. They're they're not. They're publishing it. They're not making it, from what I remember. Yeah, they're publishing it, but they, so they're going to be promoting it and things like that. So it's a fun com. It's a fun uh, com game. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but they, it looks really interesting. I personally, I like that it has a lot of story in it. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to. It. I think it'll be interesting to play. Hopefully, it lives up. It, when you see a game that's got a lot of cutscenes and, and things like that, and that's kind of what you're basing it on, but I have seen what the gameplay looks like, and the gameplay looks really good. Like the way that the characters look and they move around the world, I, I really like how it looks. So hopefully it lives up to the hype. Yeah. Now, speaking of studios, uh, our friend Smedley, who moved over to a certain studio, Amazon um, Studio. Yes, and so Amazon Studio has finally announced their first game. I've we've been waiting a very long time for this. Yes, so what is this? It? Is the the first? This is called New World. It's uh, not a pixel just, game, is it? No, it's not a pixel based game, and they just uh, opened up to where they're accepting signups. So if you want to try to get into this, this is a uh, it's New World is the name of the game, uh, and if you go to their website. You can click signups and it will actually let you get on the list to be able to get access to it when they do make it available. So um, this is a MMO, a MMO game, mostly, uh, and it's got to where you can conquer, claim territories, group up with other people, and of course battle things. So it's yeah, it's I mean it's a pretty interesting looking MMO. It's, Maybe it's a better looking MMO than what we're used to seeing. I mean, if you look at, I think it looks more like a regular game, but it's got MMO. Usually, I think we sacrifice. You don't have the, you don't, this. Is not an MMO picture, right? You don't see this in MMOs typically. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is usually in an MMO, you're sacrificing to be able to handle that to yeah. have that happen. This looks interesting. Um, yes. So, what? How much? If this is going to be what it really looks like, that's what I'm interested in. It, it, PH is mentioning, you know, is this concept art? Is this the actual game? Because certain things, it seems like they've photoshopped a little this bit. Looks like, like if you look on that, art, yeah, yeah. If you look like there's red stuff in there, that looks like mostly real. I don't know. That looks probably that looks pretty fake. close to real. That <laughs> you looks, don't think so? Well, well okay, the but people mid air, look at the cloth, mid air flying. Yeah. Come on, I'm looking at the cloth. It uh. probably wouldn't flow like that. Usually it doesn't flow like that in the game. Well, hey, so it'll be interesting got, to see how much we got this Amazon money. This. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, um, they've been working on this stuff for a while, so yeah, it's, and they've uh, got the resources to put into this. Yeah, it's a it's an Amazon Game Studio product, and um, our, our boy Smedley is leading the charge on it. So we'll uh, their specs are. Um, it's a, the high, recommended specs for this game are an i7 2600K or a Ryzen 5 1400, 16 gigabytes of RAM, an SSD. Sorry, Brian, you're not gonna be able to play, and and a GTX I got a hybrid. And a, it's not this. It doesn't matter. Or a GTX 970 or, or an AMD Radeon R. Yeah, I've got the 970. Yeah, so I mean, pretty much. I I mean minimal specs that, on this, which I I like that idea because 
we this is recommended so much in games. But yeah, this is yeah, this but- is this is legit. I mean, you're talking. This is a very this is a re- 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 resource intensive game. I mean, sixteen gigabytes of RAM minimum. Oh, it's not minimum recommended. I mean, yeah, that's. You got to have a gaming computer to play this. You're not playing this on uh, on the laptop I think that from Best most, Buy. Most MMOs have lowered the bar so much because they want everybody everybody to be able to run it. Yeah, well, they sell it in big box stores. I mean, I was in Target today yeah. buying a cable, and look at what did I see on the shelf? But a World of Warcraft sitting in yeah. physical boxes on the shelf. Yeah, I mean, and so I think that that is something where this may be. Hopefully, this will be the MMO for. A newer generation of computers to where they're actually making it look good that you know i think that they, if they could do that they'll it, it would hold people because we're we're seeing so much technology that's held over and wow has been out for so long and there's stuff that's still similar to the original i feel like i could get into an mmo yeah if it was the right game yeah i've got that person well, where it, if something hooks me i'll play it like I, I yeah. uh, to say I have an addiction is a little bit ridiculous, but I, I when I mean, I, if I get if I if I want to do this, I, I I'll set my mind to it and I'll get it done. I mean I've got I, I can I can do that, but none no M, even um what's that what's the other MMO we talk about sometimes um uh whatever too um I don't know. Uh, you guys played it mostly no, no I'm not talking about EverQuest um. No, no, not EverQuest. The one that you guys played. No, we're not talking Lance about Guild, we're not talking about Guild Wars. Not Guild Wars? Um, no, well, it's, it's, it's a... Ah, damn. I can't remember. It, isn't the Black Death an MMO? Or one of those games is an MMO. Well, uh, no. Oh, you're talking about... Um, now you're making me forget it. I'll, I'll, I'll have it here in a second. But that... But but yeah. Saying, that, th- that, there's, was, that was one. There's modern MMOs that are just not... Life is futile. Life is, is futile. Life yes. is futile. They, have, they came out the MMO version, which is... It like looks, this, but you got to think it's it it's, looks like this, but it's a very clunky MM, compared probably it, to what I'm assuming they're gonna aim for it's here. It's not. It doesn't look. It look when you hear about it, you're like, oh my god, this is incredible. And then you yeah. w- see it, and it's like this. This looks lame. Yeah. So, who knows? But if they, you know, if they put enough resources into this, they could probably come up. With and they've got the resources. Big. I mean, Jeff Bezos is worth 150 billion dollars. They should be able. To, they should be able to make a halfway decent video game. I'll be very disappointed if they can't so, make a halfway. Says, decent carve game. your destiny alongside hundreds of other players in the savage and arcane 17th century world. Survive murderous player bandits. Band together to build fortified strongholds, or strike out to claim a piece of the haunted frontier. Hmm. So, cool. I mean, the main thing I want is a big world that isn't super generic, really big world that, so you, if you're supposedly going out and discovering, like, I want it to be to where, all right, I'm going to make a trek today. I'm going to go really far and you're not just hitting the end of the map. Yeah. That's what, that's what'll be hard. But if anyone could do it, I think they could. Absolutely. Maybe they got the money, the resources, and I think the talent. I really like John. I think his, his, yep. he's got a super strong vision. Yep. So this will be interesting to see see what comes out of this. So hopefully, yeah. uh, exciting times. They, they didn't. Yeah, they they didn't put any. This was more of just the announcement because that Gamescon. Um, so they did the announcement. So I'm hoping now that they've actually gave some more details about it, we'll start seeing more and more. Maybe they'll be at PAX. I don't know. Maybe they will now that they've announced it. They we'll find be. out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, so there was a letter here. Speaking of games that didn't make it. Uh, oh. So Bosky, uh, who put out Radical Heights. Whoa, and Radical. Be- and before that, what was that other game that we heard so much about that uh, was that pa- was it PAX last year? You're talking about Lawbreakers, aren't you? lawbreakers so uh, that they that was their two ventures that they tried and and failed at and so he didn't give any interviews after this and the reason he says is because he wanted to put it in a book smart so so he wrote a book talking about um you know what happened why he thinks it failed uh and so so he just announced that uh two days ago 
And so it's, uh, it's, it's a book that uh, you'll be able to get. And he says, alongside chapters that explore the death of his father, his relationship with his wife, and the end of his first marriage, um, he talks about his time at the helm of Bosky and for when he works at Epic Games. So he just finished that book. Uh, he said he wanted he wanted to talk about the, as he says, the implosion, you know, how Bosky imploded, and tell it in his own words. So I'm going to read this book. I'm very curious. This stuff really fascinates me. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why we're. So, I don't know why we're so attracted to failure. But this stuff, this really interests me. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is he put out two good products. Yeah. Right. I mean, th we've seen bad, right? And these were not bad products. Both were games that were playable. They worked. There was nothing really wrong with the games. Radical like, Heights. You can look Radical at, Heights was kind of a shit show. But Lawbreakers. Yeah, I mean, but was he, a, he, Lawbreakers he was a early. finish. He, yeah. He released it early because he knew it wasn't going to go anywhere, I think. I think it was like, all right, you know, he's dumped so much money into it. It was a just put out what we've done so far and let's see what people thought of it. And people really liked it. That was the thing. And they still shut it down. Yeah. Lawbreakers was a polished product. Very polished. It worked. It just didn't. Uh, just he didn't put in on. a lot of money at, this, at, at, at PAX East. Oh, well, that wasn't even him. Year. That was Nexon that put up the money. They're the, being the. But they Publisher put in a huge yeah. amount of money to be able to get that that booth space. Yeah, huge booth. Uh, and it still failed miserably. Miserably. So it'd be interesting to see what he felt caused it, or you know what what happened because and and how honest this book is. Like it'd be interesting to see: does he really look at the his actual failures, or does he make excuses? Uh, so that's what I'd be interested yeah, to see. Yeah, I'm not. So, I'm not really sure. So they closed, um, actually they're closing September 14th. Let's see. So the September 14th lawbreakers is totally closing down. Um, and it's free to play until then. So if you really want to play some lawbreakers, <laughs> if you <laughs> want to get the last game of the week. Yeah. After pack. Uh, uh, let's do it. No. Yeah, let's do it. That'd be uh, fun. When are you ever going to be able to do packs? that again? Yeah, yeah, we'll do it the Friday after. Packs. Okay, after back. So we'll, do, we'll yeah. do. Yeah, we'll do Overwatch this week, and then next week we'll do. No, 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 well, no. We'll the Friday after packs. packs. Well, yeah, in two weeks we'll do law, uh, law break. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to put down on your calendars for Friday, September seventh. We are playing Lawbreakers for our Infection Podcast Game of the Week. We're going to send it off. We'll have some. We'll have a party boat. We'll have some booze. We'll have some food. It'll be a great time. And we'll send off Lawbreakers in all of its glory. So join us. Yep. And we played all played it together. And like, yeah. no one said, oh, it's crashing. We didn't run into cheaters. Like, it worked. We're doing it. So it'll be interesting to play. Mark it down. So so that's a, yeah, so that's a new book we can expect. And so it'll be interesting to see what comes of that. All right. Do you have a preference before we go from here? No, let's uh, just do a game that we've covered. We haven't we haven't talked about it in a while. Is uh, is the Darwin Project, and they had uh, an update this week. Today. Yes, actually, you're right today. And uh, this is their patch note one dot one four. Um, they're keeping their Steam and their Xbox versions together, which is not something that's very common. Normally, the Xbox and PC, the Xbox or PlayStation and PC version are on different branches, and they're in some cases, sometimes they can be very far apart. If you remember for a period of time. Usually lagging for a lot what, of games. Was it Ark for a period of time was super far behind on console. Like, yeah. And no, now they're good. I think they're like a patch behind usually. But it's pretty close. But for a while it was like, no, the, the dinosaurs didn't exist. Items were not there. I mean, it, it was it was a it was a process. And I remember when they were making that up. So um, this uh, patch went out today. They say patch a patch one dot. 4.1 is one of the largest ones in a while, so they want you to jump and take a look at it. Um, I got a couple things here. They've got a new tile uh, that they're showing here. Uh, and if you remember... very different than the previous ones. Yes, and if you remember, um, maybe you haven't uh, heard about this game in a while. Originally, the game was all... All of the tiles were in the same static format every time. They've now added it so that the map is dynamic. The tiles themselves are the same but they dynamically are placed in rotation, so the game doesn't feel the same every time. But we've got a new tile here, and it's called the Shipping Company. Um, 
Is that what it's called? It's called the uh, On the Rock Shipping Company is the name of it. And this is totally unlike anything we've seen. Um, yeah. Super vibrant in color, which this game is not known for. It's snow. It's a snow biome. Everything is either white or black. There isn't. There really isn't a whole lot of color. So a very, very vibrant um, little little thing here. You can see this is another part. Of, this is more what the game looks like. These kind of monotone buildings with snow on the yeah. roof. That's more what the style of the game is. But you can see this very uh very you think vibrant. that we're going to start seeing from here on out them kind of going for because this is more of a city like a town look kind of looks like the town, other one yeah. with more cabins or kind of cabins uh, do you think they're now going to come up with the variation of where like you're actually in a town well i think they need... I mean, that looks like what this is factory here but I, i'm wondering if they're going to go more for also adding city tiles well, i think they need pois i mean i think part of the problem with I mean, I'm not even. I mean, this right here is pretty much a POI. But that's what I'm saying. There's not many PO. The POIs are the um, things that the G, the 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 game master spawns in the the tech upgrades and things like that. But other than other than those, and obviously zones closing to force you to go to one direction, there really isn't a. I don't. I, the, there's the there's the center tile and there's that kind of arena thing in the center. I wouldn't even call yeah. that a point of interest. There's not many POIs on the whole game, from what I remember. So this is kind of this, and, and, this is interesting. And off the top of my head, like I don't think of oh that oh let's go to that zone and like I have a name for it in my head. No. Like this is one where people will say oh go to that and like they know exactly what that is. And you know you, I'm sure people who play this game all the time will know oh this is that zone you know and they have them named, but your average player won't. This exactly. is one where they'll be like oh I know exactly what tile that is. Yeah, let's go on towards shipping. Um, yeah. so they can do that. In terms, uh, so that they've got a new zone in there, um, and they say they say still itching for more variation on the Darwin Project map. Don't worry, more tiles are on their way. So they're keeping that trend up. More, they're going to have more tiles. Super exciting. They've got a new tool, the hook. Uh, it can be crafted using one leather, which is pretty low. Um, and if you successfully land a hook on an opponent, it, it's, it's a it, it's a grappling hook. It pulls you towards the it pulls them towards you rather. Uh, and they say just like arrows and snowballs, they can be deflected. Um, with a properly timed axe swing, so uh, they've got. Then they show a little screenshot here of a, of a guy with his uh, with his hook. So you can now hook players towards you and maybe hit them a couple times with a fire arrow and get something going on with that. Um, they've also introduced a tutorial into the game, which is which is I think that'll help a lot. Which is odd because that's normally something you see right towards the end of early access or, or end of alpha into beta. Uh, well, I'm wondering if 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 they feel like this is fairly finished uh, mechanics complete right well, as far as the character movements and the general they may they'll add things like they just add that hook but i think they feel like the mechanics of it because the mechanics work pretty well um and, and it i think they've done from day one when i remember playing it what a year and a half ago now the mechanics at that time yeah. even in the very early worked pretty well oh yeah the mechanics so, have always been pretty solid um i but the, i I kind of look into stuff like this when I see somebody's adding tutorials to their game, or when Ark is, you know, making sound changes to their game. Yeah. It's like, well, there there really can't be any other, you know. There's got to be some lull going on, right? There's got to be something going on that you're modifying your sound files. So, um, that's kind of cool to see. Uh, they're doing some stuff to the career and uh, leaderboard improvements. They're making some changes to that. Um, as well as Xbox One controller support for Steam. So you can now play uh, with a controller on Steam, and that's got support by default. And uh, there's some some skins in here. Um, they've got the C uh, Cyber Survivor Cosmetic uh, Kit that is in here, and you can see how uh, how those look. They're, they're robots. I think they've done a really good job of creating a unique... Their skins are unique. Yeah. Uh, they haven't locked themselves into a certain look, right? They had the ones that was the hockey look. This is more of a futuristic kind of a robot type of a look. I think they're doing a good job of creating enough variation with these skins mm -hmm. to where that they are different and interesting. Yeah, I'm uh, so so I look forward. They got a Reaper in there, uh, and a couple of others, a couple of other skins. Man, this, these colors and styles are very similar to Overwatch. Better be careful. It looks yeah. like a, it looks like I'm looking at two Lucios right here. Um, 
So yeah, that's uh, that's that's uh, the Darwin Project. Yep. Plus the whole bunch the one of thing they do show, I would go down a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, they show they did they have a screen shot for updated visuals. Yeah. Uh, that is one thing that's interesting. You can see that they've added to where it's crisper. It looks looks better. So, uh, th- and that's mean that's just from lighting. That shows you how much of a difference lighting can make. Uh, but it, it gives it, you actually can see the details of everything because they they improve the lighting in there. So, so when you're going and dressing your character, it should look more realistic or look closer to what you're probably thinking you purchase. Absolutely. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's let's talk about an, a new game that's going to be coming out here. They they announced it, but there is no. I think it, they put a year. I don't think they put an actual twenty nineteen day. It just says available twenty eighteen is what it says. Uh-huh. Uh, and this is Dying Light Bad Blood. Yes. Now, I want to get your take on this. There, it's, it's a twelve man VR. Yeah. Um, by the way, and with the player player versus environment as well, we which got is a, kind of in the dying light. We we got an email from them today. They're they're going to be doing uh, interviews and demos at PAX, so we'll have to go take a look oh, at this cool. at PAX. Uh, we just got an email from this afternoon. The, uh, it's interesting. It is it's it's clear to me that they are hopping on the um the BR the, bandwagon. the BR bandwagon. I mean, it's, it's no no surprise, no shock. But yeah, it's a. It's a BR, but it's it's a twelve person match. It's very weird. Um, it's in the Dying Light universe. There really aren't any details. There's this crazy like live action trailer thing, which is not accurate of how the game is actually yeah. going to play. But it's interesting, and I mean, this Dying Light is obviously a, a survival game, and. The, they're they got a an early access. Uh, they're going to be releasing an early access uh, BR game. Uh, now they say it's a seamless integration of PvP and PVE, which I think. So there's twelve if you look physical at that, players, but there's and then they have the zombies and they have things that are going to be happening in the world as well, which we haven't seen as much. We haven't yeah. seen that really from any other games. And I, I wonder if the twelve. I mean, probably their engine has something to do with it. Uh, you know. They're they're not trying to reinvent the wheel and or reinvent the engine and place a hundred characters or hundred players in uh, in a game that's not meant to handle that. Uh, so I think at least with this, they're doing what's realistic for their engine. Uh, and but they could make it. It could be really cool. Now, I'm sh- probably shorter matches and and a more unique style is not going to be the cut and paste VR that we've been seeing lately. Yeah, exactly. It's we've we've got obviously we've got Fortnite and PUBG. Those are kind of the baselines for a lot of games. But then you've got like the Darwin Project, which is trying something a little bit different. You have uh, Radical Heights, which was trying to do something a little bit different. Um, what's the chicken game? Um, Realm Royale. Realm Royale. Again, same similar concept, but trying to do something else. It's trying to do something else, and. Uh, uh, they're trying to do this here with uh, with with uh, with Dying Light. So I'm interested. It's it's same concept, but it's ju- I, maybe another one of these games. It's just different enough that it holds people's interest for another. If they would have said, "Hey, we're making a hundred person uh, PvP Royale," you'd be like, "Well, what the hell? Like n- nobody wants to play this." But this is just this is just different enough that it may be it may, may, may it may take off. I'm not sure, but they will be at PAX West. So. We'll get a hands-on de- demo if we can. And hand, ha- hands-on, uh, hands-on demo, and hopefully we can speak to some people about it. So stay tuned uh, to that or here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward, to, looking forward to talking to them. And we, yeah, we just got that email this afternoon, so they're uh, they'll be there, which is cool. Very good, cool. Uh, and also, so here's a video for uh, for Fallout 76. They put out a new trailer today. And this this is more of the kind of Fallout style. So there is talking through the whole thing. I don't know if you want to play it. And then I don't know that uh, you watch and see if you think it gives any more info. Um, I do. There was one thing that caught my eye in this that I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem 100% honest. And maybe I want to see if you see the same thing. All right. So, so keep the- an eye out for something you think that I would think is off. Oh, boy. In this video. Put me under some. 
<laughs> put me under some strict guidelines here. This is uh, the Fallout 76 uh, Gamescom trailer. Yep. You will emerge. Today's episode, A New American Dream. What separates man from beast? No, it's not his ability to tap dance. It is his desire to build. After thermonuclear war, oh, this man's is towering industrial this is marvels <laughs> may nope. no longer no, no, stretch no. to the heavens. It then falls on you and the ingenuity of your fellows to rebuild the America we hold dear. Get started with Camps, the construction and assembly mobile platform. It's the workbench of tomorrow. Once established, your camp will not only provide you with much needed shelter, but also the means to satisfy your hunger, quench your thirst, and even treat infection. The essential pillars of survival. Expand your camp by scavenging resources or mining raw materials the old-fashioned way. Then construct your home of the future. If your first home site is undesirable, use your handy camp to move it to a better location. With your home secure, you can now craft handmade ordnance at your leisure to give your altercations that personal touch. Or better yet, sell these homemade implements to your neighbors for profit. Remember, capitalism, it's the only thing keeping us from being communists. The world may have ended, but keeping up with the Joneses has not. Use those hard-earned profits to upgrade your dwelling. When your home looks important, you are important. Now you've learned how to forge the new American dream. You are completely prepared to rebuild the greatest nation in the world. As a hand-picked resident of Vault 76, it is your duty to carefully review your Vault Tech provided films yearly to fully prepare for the day when you will emerge. All right. Um, I made the oh, comment. Catch what I, I made the comment during the video of the skyscrapers. No, I didn't. No, at the very end when he shot the guy and killed him with one shot shot him in the head remember the the pvp uh, this was unprovoked pvp it will <laughs> oh, not happen God, you are a real freaking stickler christ almighty <laughs> they showed it as as he he did a trade and the guy then shot him and then took the stuff back that is not how this game will work this is what you're talking about right here it's not this is not how pvp he's like here oh, we he go. hands him the item he sh blows his he literally blows his one head shot. off with a one shot him arrow and then takes. And they said that that is not how PvP will work in the game. I'll tell you what, Brian. I mean, you are making. Oh, and then she trades it, and then he trades it with the girl. That yeah, remember he will be flagged, and he will be. <laughs> he will then be a guy that's supposedly flagged, right? This is true. It's not at all how they showed it off. Like if I were looking at this and not knowing what they said last week, this gives me a totally different feeling for how the i mean we, so we got a whole bunch of fake news surrounding this trailer yeah i mean we thank god brian aldridge is here no the, 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 i mean not, you're they, right they're, they're putting out if you didn't know if you didn't follow the news you would feel like oh i can do these tricks on people like i could trade and then turn on them you cannot they said that that's not but they're showing it off in this trailers if that's how it works I, I'm, I'm glad you picked up on that I don't know. That just that just caught me, and I was like, "That's that's not how it works." Like you guys just said last week that you were avoiding what you just showed happening in that trailer. Yeah, I I, I don't know. If uh, PH yeah. saying if you fall for it, you deserve to get effed at this point. I mean, I'm gonna buy it. It's Fallout. Right. I'll game. play it as a single player game, probably. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of a co op, but it's not gonna be. From what I can see, it's not gonna be what they're 
were selling us in the very beginning. Absolutely. And I, but I'm accepting that now, so I'm not disappointed. I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be a regular Fallout game for me. I'm going to play it. We'll play it with a couple of our friends, but this is not going to be a PvP game. Zarayu says the game is going to be filled with microtransactions. That's another possibility. Maybe. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, hopefully this isn't the downfall of uh, Fallout. It very so. well could be. Very well could be. Creation club mods oh. equals paid mods. Yeah, probably. And it's only available on the Bethesda net platform on uh, PC. Yeah, I mean, it's... This may be, I mean, this may be one of the last fallouts that we really go for. Well, I mean, that is possible if they failed it enough. It may be, it may be the last, here's, it won't be the last fallout. It may be. I mean, they probably would start over if, that's if my this point. truly failed. If this is a, they'd be like, oh, that was just, that was its own thing. And guess what? Failures, I mean, failure happens. I mean, they're fallout trying, five. they're trying to, they're trying to take a game that has been single player only single player into this realm of br and I'm, I'm saying into the realm of what games are popular into br these these br mmo combo things multiplayer pvp co-op built base build. they're trying to i mean there is so much stuff going on right now in the realm of gaming they're trying to figure out how in the hell do we make our game fit into this mold, Relative. but still be Fallout? And and guess what? If they fail, they fail. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's this is Bethesda. I mean, they'll they'll come back and they'll do something else. Who knows? Yeah. And knowing them, like they they wouldn't be afraid to just start over and no. say, "Oh, that was just a one off." You know, I, mean, we'll, I think we'll I think, go back to the normal. I mean, during the E three press conference, uh, I think Todd made it pretty clear that th they're giving this a try. I, but they they may find what works with this and what doesn't. Uh, I just don't see Fallout in the way that they're doing it. I don't see it being marked as a PvP game, which I, it seems like they're really trying to avoid. Yeah, it being known as a because they, I mean, they they've got to look at games like Rust and be like, that's not what we want this game to be. So I, I think that that's what they're really worried about because the audience, their primary audience is not used to the games that we play. They're not used to PVP games. Like they're used to the RPG going around, doing things over long periods of time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they got to be careful not to scare those people away. I think they want to bring in a little bit new audience, but not scare the old people away. And uh, that's so a, that it's going to be tough for them to do. That is a razor thin line razor razor thin and i don't know if they'll be able to do it but we'll see absolutely um what else i i i've we're gonna we'll, I'll, we'll forego current players this week i looked at the numbers everything's pretty stagnant we can cover a couple extra games since we were kind of okay. long on a couple of um other so the things. long dark they announced this is a game that released right um and but they are coming out with episode three and I think cool. they're going to be doing episode four as well. So uh, December of 2018, they're going to be releasing episode three. Uh, they were expecting to do it earlier, but because they did that season one or the episode one and two uh, redo, remember they like totally remade the game Yep. And, and put in a whole like story mode and all this, uh, that put them behind a little bit. So uh, the game, I, like, I felt like it was complete. And then they did this uh, and they, they've, this is a company that has gone and outdone themselves in what, what is expected of an early access kind of a Kickstarter game. Uh, the art style is spot on. Uh, the game is a true survival game and they've put in a ton of story and they've put in a, t a, a number of different game modes into this. And so I think that these guys have, are getting there to where it's as close to a triple a studio like they're i think they held themselves to the expectations of a triple a studio as far as the amount of content it's a good way to do it i mean if you're 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 gonna you're gonna try to be on the same stage as the big boys you got to play with the big boys and and that means you can't just be willy-nilly yeah. releasing garbage to public well, and they've got ps4 xbox one and pc all with the same content um, I haven't heard people saying it's broken. So uh, I think that these guys have done a really good job. So, and this one is a true, like if, if our audience 
is survival. This is one of the only survival games really out there that are current. True survival, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't checked it out, um, I would check out The Long Dark because this is, I mean, it's not a multiplayer game, right? Uh, But this is a single player survival game. So, uh, but yeah, so I just want to announce that for people because I thought that they were done um, and it's interesting they're coming out, they're, they're halfway through the game. So, uh, so that'll be good news for a lot of people. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Ark. Ark, Ark, We haven't Arc. heard very much news since they announced, but they've came out with twenty eight or two eight two dot one hundred two. In here, they added the Tech Raptor, and so I have some screenshots of of the new Raptor. And this is a new breeding line. Um, it's a five percent chance of spawn for the Tech Raptor. It's pretty legit, and and it's a twenty percent higher base level uh for the for the raptor as well so um they have color sets for this red black white and gray um that they've added and uh yeah so this will be this will be interesting and this has been a part of that extinction chronicles that they've been doing of releasing content over time up to the the new release that they're coming out with here towards was it november or december i'm trying to remember i think it's it's december yeah is it december it may i think so okay um also in here they have uh put unlocked some new pants so this is three new explorer notes and matching unlock which is the pants so they have some different pants skins here which is kind of unique looking uh, but that's to match the new look of the, of the the final dlc dlc because if you remember that uh trailer they did has some things that look like that uh in the trailer called corrupted. So, uh, yep it's the corrupted pants and they were increased the maximum player level by one they've been doing that so rather than having it to where players just jump to the new level in the dlc they've been raising it over time so people can progress to that level of what's going to be the level for the dlc um and then there was a few fixes in aberration, they they increase the plant Z range by three hundred percent. The enable the tech teleporter in aberration, uh, and then in scorched earth, they did a balance of crop plots, so they can now be grown where you would expect them to be. So they because they'd had sunlight issues with that, so now that's working correctly. So that's two eight two dot one zero two. It's been they haven't done a patch for a number of weeks, and the patch that they did do last really was just a couple fixes. So, uh, so they're finally starting to get new content in, and I'm sure we'll see another one or two, at least, uh, patches like this before the release. Um, another one is No Man's Sky. Have you been playing it at all? And uh, I haven't played this week just because of all the stuff that's been happening with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, but I but you're not, I but, will, you but you don't, and, think, but you're not done playing. No, I'm not done playing. Okay. Uh, no, there's still good stuff in there, and. Cool. It, uh, and I was kind of waiting for them to put out some fixes like this. Not that there was a bunch of bugs, but you know that they put out a big content release. Oh, yeah. Things are fixed. And it's inevitable and when you do big updates like that. So on here, they, this is the 1.57. 1.5 was the new next. Um, so they put on a number of patches. But this is just a list of uh, fixes. Um you know, fixing crashes and issues with um, placing objects, just little little things that people have run into. Um, also, just the appearance of the game. So if you're running 4K, you will notice a difference. Or if you're running 1440p, um, you'll notice a difference. Improved clouds, things like that. Um, fixed visual improvements with some of the exotic biomes. Um, just a... Just I think they've been getting a list of things that weren't quite right or things that need to be improved and fixing those. So uh, you'll probably see a couple more of these, but every I didn't haven't run into a lot of problems with the game personally. Like I didn't run into crashes, big bugs. Um, everything generally worked for me. So I think these are kind of smaller one-off things that people run into, but they are getting them, they're getting them all fixed. So if you were having a crash, maybe you played it right after this release and you were having a crash, I would try it now they've come out with now a couple of different uh fixes since uh, patches since that time so 
Excellent. Um, We're checking out. I'm trying to see if there's... No, I guess I... Co- oh, uh, did we cover the We Happy Few update? No, we have um, No, we have not. Well, so there was an update for uh, for our friends over at We Happy Few as well. And there's this is a game, if you look at their updates, specifically, I'm looking at this one, their versions are all pretty close. Um, this is their ver- Hotfix 1.3 but you, the the version number ver- doesn't vary a whole lot. The, for the Windows and PS4 are on the same version, the Xbox is actually yep. a, a above version, which means they probably that means they've probably done a couple extra patches on Xbox. But it looks like they're keeping everything yep. pretty close together, which is again tough to do. Um, now I've heard that there's a few. The PS4 version is a little more buggy, um, hmm. and uh, actually, PH and I were having some discussions of this about issues that people were having uh in we happy few and i have heard that there were issue more issues with the ps4 version which i'm thinking that for some of the people that were reviewing the game they were reviewing it on the ps4 um yeah so i because i it's been a real mixture of some people say i've had no issues with this game and then some of the reviewers have said uh, very similar issues to each other but they run into a bunch of issues if they do have issues and this uh, is a yeah, uh, this is a beta update, and they say that this is uh, this is the first post-launch binary patch. So there, the few addresses uh, progression blockers, limited performance issues, and crashes. But they do say to expect a larger content update, which will be available soon. TM uh, addressing some performance and optimization and some other issues. So there's a couple of things on here, things that are PC only that they fixed all platform issues and then a couple of issues on the PS4 um which which they seem to be you know kind of singling out so that that may fit up to your uh to your observation there but uh yeah that's uh, we have a yep. update 1.3 it's a hot fix but it's on the beta branch so you'll have to yeah so download that that'll separately. probably roll out I would assume this week yeah they say when their QA signed off tomorrow if it all goes well this was actually no this looks like this is out this this must be. Well, out. it was a couple days ago, so I'm. I, but I just haven't seen. They didn't put a You're right, they, post for um, they. It says it's live. They but this is the patch. So this they they live, rolled yeah. it live, but this was the patch note. The patch notes. It is live. So yep, check it out. Yes. So if you're having issues with that, um, I would give it a try. But as I said, like I I didn't run into. I ran into a couple of uh, animation issues, just like some of the people sitting on a bench like weren't sitting exactly how they were supposed to be sitting. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't run into anything stopping progress, not letting quests finish. Like some people are running into, but I think I assume that bigger content update will probably fix some of the animation issues that I was running. Into, and then so. they don't give a timetable on those, but they say soon. Yeah. So <laughs> take that, take that yeah. for what it's worth. TM, whatever yeah, exactly. that means. Yeah, exactly. All right, uh, and I think one of the only ones is Battlefield Five. I don't know if you have any I'm, preference I, on this, but I mentioned that the they open beta are was happening. Doing the open beta on September sixth. I mentioned this uh, when you were you, doing the uh, game giveaway. Yeah. So if they if they do if they release this, uh, if you have early access, you get a couple days before this, but it will be September 6th for everyone else. Yes. And then there's an article in here on uh, CNBC uh, saying analysts predicts that EA's Battlefield uh, 5 will be a, quote, serious disappointment. It says pre-order. They said that the pre-orders are 85% less than Call of Duty. Which is a problem because I don't think a whole lot of people are pre-ordering the new Call of Duty either. Yeah. But again, uh, but again. Uh, do you think that, what, do you think people are still going to buy it? I mean, that's. Yes. In the end, like yes, they, they won't pre-order, but they will buy yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Again, there are games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Fallout that it doesn't matter what in the hell they do, they release it, people buy it. Yeah, they. But the thing is, is Electronic Arts has been giving a, a lot more away, doing more sales of the previous Battlefield, because I, I posted a link in our Discord of they're giving away DLCs. Yeah, I got you out the DLC that they were giving away for Battlefield uh, One. Um, also, they were doing bundles and sales on the PS4, just giving really good deals. I think they're trying to get it in people's hands so that they are like, "Oh, I own the previous one." I'm, uh, Maybe yeah. for people that don't own it. 
I'm t- I, I'm t- I'm telling you, th- there. These are games that it, it doesn't matter. A, a, a Grand Theft Auto, a Fallout, a, a, a COD, a Battlefield. They're going to sell. Do you think there's hype? There's too much hype for some of the upcoming games like Red Dead Redemption 2. Do you think people are saying that's my budget right now? Like I'm pre-ordering that one. I'm going to wait on games like this uh, because I know eventually I'll get it. But I know I want to play Red Dead Redemption 2 the day it comes out. That's a good question. Do you think that's making an effect? I don't know. I don't. I don't buy. I don't buy enough games. I, I don't I don't know. See, I buy these games. The thing is, I I know like I'll, I'll probably get this one eventually, right? I won't get a day release. I got Call of Duty because you guys want you know wanted to play yeah. it, right? Same thing with Battlefield. Day. But I look at I look at Red Dead Redemption two, and that's one. It's like no matter what, I know I'm getting that one because I want to play the story so bad. But I'm just telling you, that's how I feel about these games. Like I feel like you it feel that about about this. Yeah, like, absolutely. And Call yeah, I like Battlefield and Call of Duty enough that I'll buy their game because I know I'll play. It. I'm not. I may not play it yeah. a, a hundred. I may not play it all day every day for the first month, but I know over the span of the next year, when a friend does say to me, "Do you want to play Battlefield?" I'll say yes. Because I've already got it and it's installed. I mean, I mean that's just it seems like there's a lot of competition right now for people. Because you got to think, some people they have a budget for themselves. Oh yeah, absolutely. Things you got Call of Duty Black Ops Four, Red Dead Redemption Two, and then whatever you know niche game that you like. There's plenty of other games coming out between now and then. I just think that we're getting so many of these top tier games being released so close together. Where it used to be, they were spread out. And I think that it people are kind of having to figure out, okay, with my budget, like here's what I'm allowing myself to do with pre-orders. I think that people are kind of holding well, back on. Well, they're holding back now. on before there was only like four pre-orders a year. Well, they're holding back on pre-orders because early access has screwed so many people on quote unquote pre-orders that people are more hesitant. Um, do you think loot boxes and things like that have kind of painted a little bit too to where people are just kind of frustrated with all well, things? I, th- I think so, but then I think you also look at this really and you say, the previous battlefield. But why am I going to pre-order this game? So I can get access to the beta three days earlier? Yeah, they're not really giving a reason. They're not giving enough of a bonus. Like, I think they they really put something... But the thing is, is, you don't want it to be where like people feel disadvantaged. I mean, that's kind of the Here's danger the thing. of one of these. It, I, this, just came, this just came to me. I don't know why. PC gaming is a lot different than console gaming. If you are a console gamer and don't buy your games on the either the Xbox Marketplace or the PlayStation Marketplace, there is a limited quantity available. Your local GameStop or Target or Walmart or Best Buy only gets a certain amount of copies. So you do, in fact, and I used to pre-order those Call of Duties super early on because guess what? They would not have some. They wouldn't have them launch yeah. day. They'd all be they'd be quote unquote sold out. It's totally yeah. different on the PC. There's no such thing as being sold out on the PC. It doesn't exist. It's still like that on console. Well, if you're picking up a physical they have copy. All these, yeah, now they have it where you preload and everything. You kind of have the same thing with WoW. I mean, WoW is probably the closest thing to where it used to be. People had to go to the store or have a copy shipped to them. Yeah which they didn't have Amazon two day or one day, you know, like you weren't getting things the next day. So you had to go to the store. If you wanted a day of release, you were waiting for that store for when it opened and you'd go pick it up. I mean, that's, I, I did that with the Xbox. Home. I've done that with plenty of games. I mean, I've said, what was it? The, 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 the uh, I, I, can, I need some help in chat here. Was it Halo Reach that, 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 that we uh, stood out in front of GameStop in the middle of the winter. I, I froze my ass off in November of 2014 waiting out in front of GameStop to get the new Xbox. I mean, that stuff happens with physical products, but as more and more I transition into PC only, there's just no reason for me to pre There is no reason to have $60 on my debit card. Release, yeah. Well, there's just no reason to have $60 on my debit card tied up because there's no advantage. Not that I, not that the sixty dollars, if I don't have it, means I don't eat. But the, the, but why? Why do I need to pay today for the game to come out in three months when there's really no advantage? There's no reason for me to have the sixty dollars time. I, I can just keep. I'll just buy it the same day, unless Origin goes down or their credit card processor goes down. But that's that doesn't happen. So yeah. there's just no reason. Now, if I was buying a physical copy, 
I'd have to call my local GameStop and say, hey, do you have any pre-orders? And they'd say, no, I'm SOL. I got to find somebody that can get me a pre-order if I want it same day. So. Yeah, I mean, it could be just the market is changing to where what they're trying to measure this off of isn't as valid as it used to be. I, I, I think I think that's the case because there's just there's no reason a game like Battlefield on the PC, which I, I, I more people play Battlefield on the PC than they do Call of Duty. Battlefield is a much more popular PC game than Call of Duty is. Yeah. You, there's you don't pre there's no reason to pre-order unless you well, want and I, I think i think the only reason that they now the only reason you do pre-orders is because they give you some sort of a bonus for pre-ordering like you get some in-game item you get something that's the only motivation at this point in time i think for pre-ordering anymore yeah which i mean there's I pre- that the, that's the only reason i mean that, that's not real motivation they're creating a false real motivation yeah, I mean, and now there are games that do pre-order bonuses, legitimate bonuses. I've got this Call of Duty mini fridge sitting behind me, and that was a pre-order bonus. I mean, you pre-ordered a. Spe- well, actually, it wasn't. Well, it was. It was a. Pre-order. That's more of like a. But it was a pre-order plus, special edition. Whatever. I mean, that's what it was, yeah. and you have to pre-order those because there's again there is a limited quantity. There's no Steam does not have a a, a limited copy of, of of a game. They've got un, uh, unlimited keys that they can give you. Yeah. So the, 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 there's, there's not that physical limitation. Yeah, I, it will be interesting to see once this does release. Is it as low as what this guy's predicting? Or is this a sign that they're going to have to come up with a new way to figure out if they think a game is going to be successful? And again, this 85%, more people play COD on the PC. Excuse me, more people play COD on the Xbox and PlayStation, meaning more people are playing physical copies of the game, meaning they're actually pre-ordering because they want it day one. I mean, that I don't have the exact numbers, but I can tell you without a doubt more people play Battlefield on the PC than they do uh, Call of Duty. Call yeah. of Duty is a much more popular console game than Battlefield is. Just because of how the game and lends I, itself. And I've not really played... I mean, I've not played a ton of Battlefield and. I just, it seems like Call of Duty has always been more of the, uh, yeah, the console feel of of PvP and well, it, it, just quick it's rounds. not quite so advanced. There's aim assist. There's yep. uh, Battlefield is 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 a much more fine tuned game. The sniping in Battlefield, you can you you're sniping people from much bigger open world. Oh yeah, like a, as far as the map, it lends itself. It's it's a that's why it's more popular on PC because it's 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 a much more precise game than call of duty which is just a run and gun shoot them up which is great for the console because you know you can you can sit on your couch and play you don't have well, to. i have a hard time playing battlefield on the ps4 because of that fine-tuned aiming yeah it's a pain in the ass it's much more difficult to do it'd be much easier on a pc yeah because you're sitting 12 feet from your 20 feet from your television how the hell are you yeah. supposed to see what you're doing no but i'm saying you are you're sitting on your couch playing how are you going to see what you're doing i mean at this point i'm sitting an arm's length from my pc monitor i'm sure you're Maybe an arm and a half length from your from your monitor. Yeah, about an arm. Yeah, that's a good thing. salute. Um, <laughs> so uh, so yeah, it's just it's different. Uh, but again, I'm buying I'm, I'm buying the new Battlefield. I'll be buying the new Call of Duty. I'll be buying Fallout, and I'll be begging for money on this podcast because I'm I'll be running over my budget. So you know that's uh, yeah. <laughs> that that that's what we'll do. But hey, it is. I mean, it is what it is. The pre-orders. All right. Well, we're way over time now. We are. So, uh, all right. We're ready for my tip of the week? Sure. What is tip of the week? All right. Tip of the week, tip of the week is where I either do a general helpful gaming tip or something maybe more specific for a game that we've been playing lately. And I've been playing some We Happy Few, so that's what it's going to be. This is tip of the week. All right, just a couple tips to uh, hopefully make life in uh, We Happy Few a little easier. Uh, one thing you may find that you're running short on storage in the game. Uh, perhaps you're carrying too many items. Uh, you're hitting your max carry weight in the character. You can actually store your items in your pneumatic stash at your base. So make sure before you leave, uh, you dump items in there. And those are more for long term. Uh, you won't have them with you, of course. But you know you probably are carrying a lot of items that you'll later use for crafting 
uh, that you won't need to use right away. So go through there before you leave your base, um, stash those items in there. And, uh, and then if you need them later, when you're, you're crafting, uh, you have a crafting bench in your base, you can pull them out at that time and make items that you might need. Also, um, at your safe house, different safe houses, you may notice that there is a water tap out there. Uh, if you're having joy related side effects, make sure you drink out of that water tap. Um, that will help you to, uh, to get rid of some of those things that may be affecting your character. Also, uh, if you're in Wellington Wells, and if, if you haven't played this game yet, you may be saying, well, what is that? Uh, this is a location in the game. The water wells there are actually laced with joy. So if maybe you're suffering from joy related amnesia, uh, you can drink from these to slowly raise your joy level and help to, uh, to safely reduce those side effects. So, um, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps you in the game. Uh, but as you play the game more and more, you learn that mastering the, uh, the level of joy is, is required, uh, to get through certain areas, um, to not have people notice you things like that. So, uh, hopefully that helps you to be able to master it a little bit better. So that is tip of the week. All righty. Thank you very much. Oh, God, that's not what I meant to put. Thank, thank, thank you very okay. much, Brian. I'm telling you, man, I'm a, I'm a mess today. This, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. It's fine. You know, you just get some sleep tonight. I, I'm not even tired. I don't know what my problem is. Yeah. Just every, everything is, every, I don't, I don't know. Things are just. Yeah, shakes. Uh, not having a drink this long. No, between. I mean, it's, it's, that's not it. I don't know what my problem is. I'm just like, I just, you never just feel off. I just feel off. I don't know what my problem is. Yeah. I'm just, I'm off. I felt like that today. It was because, uh, you know, people, I think we talked about the pre-show, but I had a family member. Well, my wife, a wife member of my family, I guess my wife's family, um, passed away. So we've just been dealing with getting things ready for the funeral and all that. So that just kind of messes with your head. Not that like I'm, like depressed about it but you know that just that just affects your week right yeah so yeah so i felt like that i don't right. have an excuse i just i don't know i just feel weird i'm so excited for pax that's what it is <laughs> you're just getting anxiety uh, to be honest i'm a little anxious for pax but uh, that's i don't believe i had anxiety that. last year i don't know why like i don't get anxiety. i'm very i'm very anxious because i have yet to test any of the equipment that we're going to be using so uh, yeah. it, it's going to be great <laughs> I, it'll be good. We'll 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 make it happen. Oh, believe me, we will. So, uh, game right. giveaway. Yeah, who's uh, who's getting the game? Let's... All right. I can't let you leave Go here ahead. without stealing a game from somebody. Uh, Locklore ninety seven. Ah. Locklore, long time listener. Probably many time entering for the yeah, many time winner. I, I <laughs> I've seen that name pop up in the list before. So. So congratulations, Locklore. I will send you a message. Actually, I'll probably send it to him inside of in, inside of Discord. It just it's a pain to send inside of. They, they made it a pain to uh, send to deal with sending somebody a message inside of uh, inside, of Steam. inside of Twitch. Uh, yes, inside of Twitch. Ah, Falcon becoming the bit leader. Thank you very much, Falcon. Appreciate you as always. And uh, we have one more program before we. Uh, Head out to PAX West. So, oh yeah, PH saying a whole bunch of uh, Twitch PMs leaked last week. Yeah, I saw an article about that today. Uh, they weren't taking good care of their uh, their uh, direct messages. I don't system. have any juicy Twitch PMs. Oh, I bet you. <laughs> I guess not. I, <laughs> I bet you some people do. I don't have yeah. any. Mine's, mine's are codes. <laughs> hey, Steam codes. A half hour need hey, redeemed. <laughs> can I send your Steam code here? That's yeah. Um, so we're heading out there. Um, 10 days the show starts. We'll be out there in nine days. You can head on over to our website, infectionpodcast.com forward slash PAX. We're looking forward to it. You know, Lance is telling me how he's going to be flying out there first class and he's going to have this whole great experience. And I said, oh, that's lovely. I'm flying <laughs> in a leg room. I'm flying in economy. So thanks. <laughs> appreciate it. I appreciate you. So there well, you go. Th this will be, yeah, this will be a lot of fun. I, the weather will be better because I mean, it, it was cold. Oh, uh, well, it was East. fantastic. We had a blizzard. Oh, it was amazing. What blizzard. are you talking about? Uh, and so this should be really nice weather in Seattle about this time of year. So this will be this will be good. Hopefully, it doesn't you, rain. You probably do, yeah. You you don't need to bring a jack a jacket, but you might want to bring something that'll a hoodie repel water. Oh uh, yeah, uh, so. probably not. Whatever, we'll figure it out. 
whatever. We'll probably won't be outside that much, but there there might be some walking. We'll be Seattle, pwning noobs on. all the whole the whole time. <laughs> there's no time to be spending outside. All right, is anyone bringing bringing a console? Are we gonna, are we going to play games in the hotel room at night, or yeah, that's to to somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else can do that. I'm not bringing anything. I've got all this other garbage. I've got to bring. <laughs> the yeah, lighting rigs and tripods and cameras and. Well, I don't even know what like what kind of TV we have in there, so it's it's not worth messing around. We'll have plenty to do. Got our uh, got our friend uh, Sean will be joining us in uh, an, an official uh, infection podcast polo, so he'll be part of the team. We'll be Thanks. rocking our uh, embroidered polo shirts out of packs. So yeah, it'll, it'll be a good time. We're looking forward to it. Very good. All right. Well, are we good to roll out? Uh, I I guess so. All right. If you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter or check out my blog, bitevtech.com. Make sure you go check out our website, uh, infectionpodcast.com. And if you haven't joined our Discord yet, Discord yet, I encourage you to just go on there, click the link, join our Discord server, and you can send messages, play games with people throughout the week, uh, submit news that you think might be interesting to the show. And uh, it's just a place where people post all kinds of things, and we have a lot of fun in there. Um, and so uh, also, if you want to go find our Twitch channel in there, we have our YouTube channel. Uh, we have our audio only forms of the podcast and we have all, all our show notes for every single show. There's sometimes we have news that we don't get to reach, uh, reach through the show because we're caught up on one topic. Uh, we have all the notes of things we were expecting to hopefully talk about in there. So uh, make sure you check out the show notes each and every week. Yeah. PH was reminding me, I'm going to bring, I'll bring my SNES and NES classic. My NES classic's got like 300 games on it that I may have illegally borrowed from the internet. So Oh, well, I'll bring those. That oh yeah, yeah, that would probably that'd be yeah, be a good thing. It'd be, it'd be great. Simple and easy, small. I'll, I'll bring, I'll bring all, I'll bring those. Yeah, so that's what I'll be bringing out to packs. Alrighty, Brian. Well, I'll uh, I'll see you Tuesday, and then I'll see you Thursday. And I, I mean, yeah. and I'll see you Thursday. Yes, I'll be, I'll touch you <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> it does, but it's a reality of the situation. There'll be a, there'll be a, a firm handshake for all. So, uh, yes. <laughs> the one, the one. Might, might even sleep in the same bed. You never know. Hey, you never know what happens at, so, what happens, uh, at, what happens at a basement kinda. Airbnb in the West side of Seattle stays in a basement <laughs> yeah. Airbnb. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Um, alrighty folks. Well, uh, we're here Tuesdays, even though we've had some Monday shows, a crazy work, work week last week, but my mission, my goal was accomplished. So we're good to go. Follow us on Twitter at InfectionCast when a show time or date or something changes. That's where we tweet and join it us out. Friday for Overwatch. As well. Yes, I forgot. Overwatch Friday night. Join us for that. Um, so if you yeah, follow us on Twitter at InfectionCast for updates when things change or whatnot. Uh, we'll be posting pictures from packs there and videos. We may do, uh, I think this Periscope, the Twitter uh, video service. I think it's Periscope. Well, maybe we'll do some Periscoping and stuff like that. So definitely follow us on Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have a we'll have a good old time out there. So, alrighty, folks. Well, uh, thank you for tuning in to episode 188 of Infection, the Survival Podcast. Of course, you can visit our website, infectionpodcast.com. My name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.